Hello everyone and welcome back. Welcome to another Crafty Decor Adventure. Olivia here with Olivia's Romantic Home and in today's video I am over the moon and excited to share with you 20 DIY Dollar Tree and budget friendly fall wreaths, garlands, some fall Christmas trees, and a mailbox floral. Listen, I'd love to share with you guys how you can make your home's boutique gorgeous on a budget. And I'm currently going to be on vacation for one week, but I will be posting on my regular schedule program for YouTube and also Facebook. So you guys won't miss a video. And I thought this compilation video would be amazing. So you guys could get a ton of different ideas on different styles of fall wreaths. Um, and so I just hope you guys are totally inspired. I hope you guys are having fun crafting and decorating and wish me luck being a bridesmaid for my amazing sister. So without further ado, let's go ahead and plug in those glue guns, get out your glitter and paint, and let's get to craft. For the first DIY, I want to share with you all how to make a super adorable deco mesh fall wreath. So I'm starting out with a Dollar Tree wreath frame and some of the deco mesh from Hobby Lobby. It is so cute. And so I'm just making poofs and using these zip ties. So I'm just making a poof and zip tying it on every little, you can see the little straight prong that's on the wreath form. That's where I'm zip tying it is into the center part of that prong. So it's super easy. You guys do not be afraid of the deco mesh. Um, and again, I did get this deco mesh at Hobby Lobby. And so I'm just making a little poof and tying it off with um, the zip tie. Now you guys can also use um, pipe cleaners or wire or whatever really suits your fancy. I usually actually do use pipe cleaners, but I am fresh out and I've gotten so hooked and spoiled on these zip ties. It's just making it so easy. So the next thing I want to do is add another layer of poofs as well. And so I'm just going to zip tie again in to um, another part of the wreath frame, but I'm going to do it in between the prongs this time and just pull like the little poofs out. And I would say the poofs are probably about 12 to 14 inch poofs, possibly. I didn't measure them and I don't really do a whole lot of deco mesh wreaths. So you'll have to bear with me, but know that if I can do it, you guys can totally do it. And you guys can see that you can still see the frame in here. So we're only going to use one roll though of the deco mesh. And again, I did get the deco mesh at Hobby Lobby. All of their fall goodies are 40% off. It's going to be in with the fall stuff. And it's this really pretty kind of orange and white check, which I really just kind of fell for. I thought it was really soft and cute and fun. So once you're done getting all those poofs, you can just go ahead and kind of poof out them out. The next thing I wanted to do was cut some 12 inch long poofs. Okay, I'm gonna use these and then also some ribbon. So again, this ribbon is from Hobby Lobby and I'm cutting 12 inch strips of ribbon and I'm going to layer the extra deco mesh um, underneath the little ribbon. And this might be kind of unconventional, but this is how I like to do some of my deco mesh wreaths. I just think it's so much easier than making all those cuts. <laughs> but feel free to cut and, you know, poof around your deco mesh, however you love to make it. Okay, the next thing you guys can see me doing is I'm taking my ribbon and I'm dovetailing the ends of the ribbon. So I'm cutting a little triangle in an upward direction. And then I'm going to take, and I'm just going to take two of my poofs and kind of squishy them together or ruffle them with my fingers or, you know, just kind of whatever floats your boat. I'm trying to get the maximum out of my uh, poofs as possible with my deco mesh. Now I'm taking my ribbon and I'm layering the black and white buffalo check, the orange and white, and then the smaller ribbon with the plaid and also the orange. So I did four different types of ribbons and now I'm just going to pop them in and zip tie them to again, those little prongs that are on the center part of my wreath form that I already zip tied my original poof to. So so I'm going to end up using about six of these extra like poofs with the ribbon. So you will want to make sure that you have plenty of ribbon on hand, but even with this amount of ribbon, I did cut extra. And so you guys are going to see in some of my other DIYs, how I use that extra ribbon. I think that's always fun to do as well. So now I'm just kind of pulling the ribbon out so you can really get the maximum cuteness and poofness and give me some grace here. Um, I do need to just kind of you know, kind of arrange things as I go. But anyway, you guys are just gonna repeat that process. So do the layers of the deco mesh, and I did two of these. I cut them all at about 12 inches, and then I'm adding in those two.
So I'm just continuing to add in my little bundles and kind of give them a bit of a fluffing. And I'm also going to end up adding a sign into this as well. There's so many ways you guys can do these, but really if you have some deco mesh and some ribbon, you're pretty good to go. So you guys can see I added in the pumpkin spice and everything nice. That's a Dollar Tree sign. And then I'm gonna use my easy bow maker and I'm gonna make a cute little bow. I always like to save enough ribbon um, when I'm doing these wreaths to add in a bow. So I'm using a six inch on either side of my bow. So if you guys can see that those center little wood posts on my bow maker is what holds my ribbon in. And then I'm just dovetailing the ends. And then, so I go six inches on each side. It's really nice because it has, you know, a little measurement tool. And if you're looking for these bow makers, you guys can find them on Deco Exchange or in your local craft stores um, or on Amazon. Now, some Sometimes those little center prongs get a little annoyed and I have to hammer them back in. So anyway, but otherwise they're a great little bow tool. So I'm adding in my smaller ribbon and still dovetailing those ends. And then I'm just going to use a zip tie to tie my bow. That way it's nice and tight together. And then I zip tied it onto the top part of my wreath and I kind of made it go off to the side and then I'm gonna give it a nice little fluffing here. So again, these are so fun to make. You guys can just have so much fun. Now I happened to pop into my local thrift store and I found these acorn, um, these cute little acorn um, ornaments. That's what I'm trying to say. I do wanna do another fall tree, but my Christmas trees are up in my attic. So I thought I would add some of these ornaments into this cute little wreath. I also, found some little fall leaves at the thrift store and they were the darker brown color so I wanted to incorporate that in since I did choose this darker sign again this is a Dollar Tree sign it says pumpkin spice and everything nice and you guys have to let me know what you think about this how did I do with my color combos sometimes I do get a little bit nervous with the de deco mesh wreaths because I like to add in so many different color combos but I think that the black and white with the little black and white um, blanket ladder is so cute so fun and fabulous on a total budget First, a Dollar Tree DIY. I want to share with you all how to make a super adorable pumpkin wreath. And we're going to make a wooden beaded wreath. Okay, so from the Dollar Tree, or you guys can also grab these at Hobby Lobby. You're going to find one of these wire wreath frame forms. And I was just at Hobby Lobby the other day and scooped one up. Now, this one I have left over from Dollar Tree. But you're basically going to clip the little wire tops off. And then once you have that done, you can wrap the handle. Now, as you can see, I overclipped just a little bit. So part of my wreath form kind of came unbuckled there but it's okay because you can pretty much glue it all back together so I'm using this nautical rope from the Dollar Tree and I'm just wrapping the, the top part of my pumpkin and then I decided to wrap actually the entire thing with nautical rope number one it's gonna give my little wreath form a lot more stability and number two it just looks super adorable and so ready for fall Okay, the other idea I have for you guys is to just grab a wreath form and kind of create something similar with just a circle wreath form. And I'm gonna share that with you guys a little bit later in this video, how you can kind of create a cute little pumpkin goodie or fall uh, wreath form in a similar fashion without having the actual pumpkin wreath form. Now, the next thing I wanna do is I'm gonna take these beads. You guys know the beads have been all the rage forever now. But I got these off of Amazon. They're already in the natural wood color. Now you can find some at Dollar Tree. Sometimes they're colored and sometimes they're in a natural wreath form. But basically you're just gonna take and you're gonna load up the little um, prongs for the pumpkin part with beads. We're gonna make a super kind of cool, um, just chic farm pumpkin wreath. And I will tell you, I did see this craft um, on the shabby tree, which I love Barb. Say hey to Barb for me. She is absolutely amazing, has the best ideas. Go check her out if you're not following her. Definitely go follow her. But, so I decided to give it a whirl on my own. Of course, I always like to do my own little twist on it. Um, so anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and finish loading up the little prongs um, of the pumpkin wreath form with these beads. I think I did a pumpkin wreath form for you guys last year and maybe we used mesh on it. I actually totally cannot remember, <laughs> but these are so fun to play with and get creative with. And I just thought the beaded look, I know it's totally in. So here is how it turned out. Now to reattach the little um, prongs, you're just going to take your bead all the way to the end and hot glue that back on there. And you do wanna give it some time to dry and be very generous with your hot glue as well. 
Now you guys know me, I love my bows. So I decided to take my little bow maker. This is just the Easy Bow Maker. Hey, you guys can grab one on Amazon, uh, Deco Exchange, they're super cheap. And so I'm gonna make a quick little bow. When I start into my bow making season, I love to cheat and use this because it allows me to use a little bit less ribbon, but also get a really great little bow. Now, if you guys want to see more Christmas bows and fun bows, I have a great little um, DIY bow video for you. It's gonna be in the description box of this YouTube video. Okay, so the next thing I wanna do is just add one more little ribbon. So this ribbon is actually from Hobby Lobby. I cheated and I went ahead and grabbed fall ribbon because my Dollar Tree definitely doesn't have very many fall goodies out, to be honest with you guys. I'm using a lot of stuff left over from last season. I do like to repurpose and reuse a lot of my stuff as well. I'm tying the bow off in the center with this little jute twine. And that way, you know, you don't see any hardware. Um, you guys could also use wire or whatever. So I'm just going to tie it on and then I'm going to give it a good fluffing. It does look a little bit limp <laughs> and um, sad, but once we have it all fluffed up, which is really the secret to my bows, also a quick little idea for you guys is to always try to use wired ribbon. Wired ribbon is going to stand up to a bit of fluffing and all of that fun stuff. I know the perfect place I'm going to put this. It's either gonna hang right outside my front door or on my little kitchen. Um, I have this cute little hook that I like to put seasonal wreaths on. Here is how it turned out. I'm super pumped. I also just might be setting it um, somewhere. It'd be cute to set in front of like a little pumpkin picture or just kind of how I displayed it in this um, video. And these pumpkins that are back behind this are actually leather. Here with you how to make a hula hoop wreath. Okay, so you're gonna grab a hula hoop from the Dollar Tree. And then I'm just using some of this burlap fabric. You guys can get burlap fabric at pretty much any craft store. And also if you don't have burlap fabric, but you have maybe an old sheet, you can make um, kind of like a strip of fabric and just use that to cover your hula hoop. I have done that many times before. The next thing I wanted to do was repurpose some old greenery from this summer, but it's kind of like a pretty, you know, just neutral greenery. So I added um, two layers of that. Then I added a layer of the Dollar Tree feathers and then a layer of these Dollar Tree pine cones with the little um, cotton uh, goodies and cattails at the end. And so, I mean, basically I just have several Dollar Tree and then some greenery all layered in there together on at the base of my hula hoop. And then I'm taking a zip tie and I just zip tied everything together. I think it looks pretty cute so far. Far, but if you guys know me, I love to go over the top. And so I just added in some white Dollar Tree mums. These are the mini mums at Dollar Tree. Grab some bundles of these if you guys happen to be out and see these. I really think they're really nice to pop into your arrangements that are going to be a little bit of you know, a smaller of a detail over some of the larger flowers you might be using for fall. So the next thing I wanted to do was using my Easy Bow Maker, I just made a cute little fall bow. Now Dollar Tree doesn't have out their fall ribbon and it's kind of hit or miss anyway. So I cheated you guys. I went to Hobby Lobby. All of their ribbon for fall in their fall section is gonna be 40% off right now. So I'm just using my Easy Bow Maker. I'm making a six to seven inch bow on either side. So it has like a little measuring goodie and then you just kind of work it back and forth. I'm also using this Dollar Tree burlap ribbon. I kind of shared with you guys in one of my hauls that you can get away with this during the fall season. And then to make my bow, I'm just making this next loop a little bit smaller. I really do love the Easy Bow Maker. It makes it really easy for me when my fingers are tired. It acts as the center point holder and it allows me to layer different colors. Now I do a really easy Olivia bow as well. You guys can check out that um, video in the description box of this YouTube video. Now I added in this yellow kind of wheat and then also this plaid. I really like to combine a lot of ribbons. I think sometimes I'm a little bit like Punky Brewster. I don't know if you guys remember her from back in the 80s or 90s, but she always liked to use tons of different colors and patterns. So I guess um, I really like to get creative with my bows. I'm not super creative, I think, in thinking outside the box with tons of patterns and colors, like with my outfits. When it comes to my bows, I do like to just really have fun with it. So I'm zip tying the center of this bow. 
with a zip tie and then I'm going to fluffy out my bow. Now I looked at this and realized, hey, that ribbon had some orange in it. So I just grabbed some more Dollar Tree sunflowers out of my little um, Dollar Tree floral stash. And then I felt like that that was pretty nice. And so I just zip tied my bow to the base of my hula hoop wreath. And you guys, <laughs> look at how adorable this came out. Listen, I feel like this looks pretty high end. I did pop in a couple of little Dollar Tree pumpkins and then I just called it good. I had a couple of little scrap pieces laying around that I kind of filled in a little bit more, but otherwise I thought it came out pretty fabulous and I left the green part in because right now where I'm at, it's really hot and it's not quite fall. So I can always go back in and add some more layers of fall leaves once fall gets a little bit closer, but I thought this was a fun take on everything. It also incorporates Dollar Tree DIY. I'm going to take these two Dollar Tree garden trellises and I'm going to take them and put them end to end and then wire them together with this Dollar Tree floral wire. This is super easy to do and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of bend them very carefully and shape them into the shape of my mailbox. The next thing I want to do is cut several rolls of deco mesh. I ended up using about four to five rolls of deco mesh. Now I am just using deco mesh that I have on hand. My goal is to actually use up the rest of my fall deco mesh. So I had several rolls of the candy corn and several rolls of orange deco mesh. The next step in this project is for me to go ahead and cut my pipe cleaners. I'm going to take about 30 pipe cleaners and just cut them in half. So bend them to where you find their center and cut them in half. That's going to save um, on your pipe cleaners. And I'm going to take some Dollar Tree fall ribbon. Again, I'm using up the rest of my fall ribbon. I'm coming to some of the end of my fall crafting and I like to go ahead and use what I have on hand, resisting the urge to buy more fall ribbon. You guys know I'm a ribbon junkie, so that can be kind of hard. The next thing I want to do is go ahead and cut strips of ribbon in about nine inch cuts. So I cut my mesh in about eight to nine inch cuts, and then I'm also going to cut my ribbon in about nine inch cuts. And then once I have that done, I also want to go ahead and dovetail my ribbon. And by dovetailing, I mean I want to make a really pretty boutique end finish. So you want to cut a pretty triangle end on your your ribbon. So go ahead and pre-cut your strips as well. And then once you have that done, you can make your little curly cue. So you just roll your deco mesh in it to just a cute little curly cue ribbon. You're going to put three of your curly cues together and then lay one piece of ribbon on top of that. And then take your pipe cleaner and just bundle that together. Super easy peasy. You guys can totally do this. That's going to create a bundle and have fun with this. This does not have to be perfect. Um, just practice with it. If your fingers get tired, give yourself a break, put on a fun show. This does take a while, especially for a project that's kind of larger. This would be a larger project like a wreath. Um, in fact, this does remind me of kind of doing a wreath. And if you want a really full mailbox floor like what I did, um, but you guys could just do something smaller as well. So relax, have fun with it and go for it. Now it is nice to go ahead and pre-cut your little dovetail ends and this is an extra step. You don't necessarily have to take this step. I do like to do this to kind of give it that boutique finish. So think about this, especially if you're a wreath maker or a crafter that's wanting to sell your projects, this can give your project just a little bit more of an edge that your buyer might look for. Just a little tip on that, you know, that extra special touch, but a flat edge bow or just a scissor to the side bow is a nice look as well so it kind of is what you're going for you can always give your projects a different look here and there so that's fun too the next step is to assemble our little curly cue bundles onto the center part of our garden trellis. So I started in the center and I also pre-measured on my mailbox where I needed my little curly cues to go. So I'm going to start in the center with my curly cues and I'm just twist tying them on with the pipe cleaners that I use to twist my bundles together. So I'm adding three of my bundles to each center part of the um, 
little squares here. So for every square, I'm having three bundles. And I will tell you that one side of your trellis, or for me on my mailbox, I'm not going to be adding any bundles because that will be the side where my mailbox number is going to be displayed. So my mailman will know um, which house he needs to go to, although it is the same mailman. And also I want to let you all know that I did get his permission to um, put this floral on my mailbox. He said as long as he can open and close the mailbox, it is totally fine. He's totally game on. So just a little side note for that. Now I am assembling the bundles along the side part of the trellis and then into the center. Again, just kind of filling it out. I did end up using some of the little red truck um, wired ribbon that Dollar Tree carries and I used some of that to make the bundles. I ended up having a lot of that ribbon left over, surprisingly, a lot more than I thought. I thought I would use that ribbon a lot more than I ended up using. Also, I did assemble all of my bundles in advance. Now, for the next Dollar Tree DIY, I am going to make a fall ribbon bow. This is going to be a really huge bow for my little mailbox floral. I'm going to start out with my easy bow maker. And so many of you all ask where I buy the easy bow maker. Okay. I bought mine on Amazon, but you can buy it so much cheaper on the deco exchange website or at your local Michael's store. Use your coupon and you'll get it for about, I believe 11 to $13. Now don't quote me on that because I paid uh, so much more during quarantine for mine, but go ahead and start. And I'm going to use seven inches on either side of my ribbon loops. I also want to let you all know that I do use wired Dollar Tree ribbon. Okay. Always use wired ribbon when you're making a big bow. That's super huge in your bow making. Now I am going to dovetail my ends by cutting the little triangle in the end. That's going to give you that boutique finish. Also, go ahead and layer another pretty ribbon on. So I like to do a pattern ribbon and then um, a plain ribbon. That's just how I'm doing this bow. Again, I'm using up the extra fall ribbon in my stash and this is another Dollar Tree ribbon. So I'm using the Dollar Tree Little Red Truck pumpkin ribbon and then the orange ribbon. I'm dovetailing the ends on this one as well. Now I did have some candy corn ribbon and I found this at Michael's. Lo and behold, I was so excited. And again, I'm just doing seven inches across. Now this is a really thick bow. I'm also using this Dollar Tree Chevron ribbon. I thought it'd be a cute little pop. And again, I'm using what I have in my stash. I'm dovetailing the end on this one. And then once I have that done, I'm just going to tie this whole thing off in my pipe cleaner. Now, the reason I'm making such large loops, a seven inch loop on each side is a really large loop. Also note on your easy bow maker, it's really nice if you have problems with your hands and you just need that extra help. And it has that little measurement already on there. So it helps your bows be a little bit extra symmetrical, which I really love. Now use your pipe cleaner or wire, or you can even use another piece of ribbon to tie off your bow. Once you have your bow tied off, this is another secret is you want to give your bow an extra good fluffing, pull out all those loops, twist them and pull them and twist them and fluff them some more. So I usually do like a pre fluff before I add it to my project. And then once I get it on my project, I fluff and fluff and fluff some more because you're really not going to get it perfect until you actually get it onto your project and you can see, well, hey, I need this ribbon to go this direction and then I need this ribbon to go this direction and oh, it looks like I want my candy corn ribbon to show more. So I know a lot of you all say you still have problems with your bows. Well, that might be a helpful hint for you there and keep working on it. You know, bow making takes a lot of work. I had an Etsy shop for years and so I don't feel like I'm a pro at all by any means, but I do ha have had some practice. So I will tell you that practice makes perfect and just keep working. Um, don't give up. You guys can totally do this. Okay. So see, I'm still fluffing and I don't even feel like I'm even close to being there. Now, once I have it adequately fluffed, you can see I have a lot of mesh on one side. So this is the side where my mail um, box is going to be uncovered. So I am going to leave that bow at the top. Um, and then I wanted to share with you guys another Dollar Tree DIY. So here's a fun idea for you guys to do. I'm going to take this Dollar Tree sign and then some Dollar Tree poster board letters. What you can do is you can add the numbers of your house. And this isn't my real numbers. I just wanted to give you guys an idea. 
and you can add them on to a sign and then um, you can use like a never wet sealer and seal over or you could paint um, the numbers of your house onto a sign. What I did though is I hot glued these poster board numbers onto my sign and then I used poly acrylic over that. So hopefully it will stay. If it doesn't, I'll just remake a different sign because you guys know me, I'm a Dollar Tree sign junkie, so I have plenty of them. So anyway, I hope that gave you guys kind of a fun idea. I was going to use this little pumpkin sign, but I actually ended up using this pumpkin spice and everything nice. And you can see I'm using the poly acrylic over it. I didn't show you the whole sign because I really don't want my address out there for everyone to see. But I ended up using this square sign because it had a lot more room for me to put, um, you know, my address on there. So just a little note there. So here's the side. And then I did see, you guys can see I added those fall leaves. I also wanted to leave you guys a note and let you know that I used zip ties to zip tie the little trellis onto the underneath part of my mailbox. And then the other side is where my mailman drives down my driveway to deliver my mail. And there's my little pupper assistant. And so then he can see, you know, my numbers nicely displayed and my last name. He can easily open my mailbox and everything is good to go. So, so fun and fabulous. And it is a very wowzer, um, over the top mailbox floral. Even for me, I was like, whoa, I also added a couple little pumpkins. Those are from Dollar Tree. And then the um, larger one is actually from Walmart. They have them from $5. And I need you guys' help. Comment and let me know. Does anybody have real pumpkins anywhere? Because I've been calling all over high and low. Um, I really want to do my house tour for you guys. I can't find real pumpkins anywhere. So I may just have to do a fall house tour without any real pumpkins. <laughs> you know, not a big deal at all, but you guys, I do love to have some real pumpkins set out for you to see. Anyway, um, I'm just wondering where they're all at. Hopefully they'll pop up somewhere soon. Okay. So for the next DIY, this is actually just a little burlap sack. I picked this up at the target dollar spot last season. I'm not for sure if they have any this season. I haven't done a whole lot of target, um, shopping this year, but I do have these little bundle of Dollar Tree uh, fall leaves I popped into here. And I actually have some real leaves I collected from my yard down inside this burlap basket. And then I'm just going to take some of these Dollar Tree scarecrows, pop them into the little um, burlap uh sack here. You could also just use, you know, a little basket or any kind of little sack. You could use a Dollar Tree treat sack and just stuff it full of some bags. Pretty much anything you guys want to kind of tie around the base of your mailbox to just kind of put a little happy floral down there. Just, just a little funsy goodie. And then I just took the, um, uh, tie sacks on either side and just tied them together and I thought that was really fun and fabulous I really Dollar tree so they come with several different um, little round prongs inside of it and I think you're supposed to be able to kind of fan it out and make it into a sphere my idea was to kind of create like a cute little almost fall pumpkin-y looking wooden wreath um, not wooden wreath but anyway I'll show you what I'm creating so I took one of them and I just decided to add a nautical rope around the entire thing. I want to kind of do a similar creation to the little pumpkin wreath form that I did in case you guys don't have the pumpkin wreath form and you may just want to use some of these round hoops. You guys can add um, a beads and you can also add the nautical rope. And I will tell you, I burnt myself so bad today with um, this nautical rope. So be careful. The next thing I did was just kind of take apart um, the little um, wreath on one side. That way I could scoochie some beads on it. And then I glued that back together and popped it back onto the little sphere and then it took apart the opposite side. And that way I could add some beads to the opposite side. I hope that makes sense, but it has these like little prongs that you can kind of fit everything back into. Um, and so you can just fit everything back in together and then add beads to the opposite side, which I will admit it was a little bit tricky kind of 
trying to get all of that back on. Um, but with a little bit of hot glue, you guys know me, I can pretty much do magic things with hot glue, at least in my opinion, most of the time. <laughs> so I just hot glued everything kind of in to secure it a little bit better. And then I decided to create a really cute bow. So this is actually the ribbon that I was looking for earlier. And this is that pumpkin ribbon. It's from Hobby Lobby. And again, I'm just cheating using my easy bow maker and I'm going to create a cute little bow. Sometimes it's nice just to use actually the same ribbon. I do like to do bows with all different kinds of ribbon but then for this one I think I just wanted something a little bit simpler and I really wanted to show off this pretty pumpkin ribbon and the pumpkin ribbon is from Hobby Lobby it's 40% off right now you guys all their fall stuff is you guys can also go on Amazon and I did order a pack of fall ribbon I'm curious to see how it's going to be I didn't really want to link it for you guys until I can actually test it out and make sure that it's you know good ribbon sometimes you go on Amazon and you're not getting exactly what you're thinking you're getting. <laughs> anyway, I'm adding some cute little Dollar Tree leaves to the top and the bottom of this, as well as a pumpkin to make it feel more pumpkin-y, I guess. But I just thought it was a cute little interesting, fun creation. And especially if you guys couldn't find that pumpkin wreath form, this might be a good little idea that you guys can use. And then here is how it turned out. I just kind of popped it off to the side on this little sign. I haven't gone full out fall decor in my home yet. This is actually my crafting studio. So it's getting really, really full of fall in here. Um, it's kind of bursting with fall goodness, which I kind of really love. It's such a cozy, cozy vibe, but I do like to get a super big jump start on all my Dollar Tree DIY. I'm going to make a super adorable kind of fall Halloween Dollar Tree wreath. So I'm taking five bundles of the Dollar Tree Deco mesh and I'm cutting them in 10 inch strip. And here is me after I cut all my bundles and then I'm just kind of bundling them together by grabbing three strips and pinching them to the center. And I had these kind of rolled in like a little curly Q or burrito. So the Dollar Tree um, Deco mesh kind of already is formed in that form. So it's a really easy way to do it. And then I just zip tied it to the center part of my little wreath form. And I am going to do lots of zip tying here. Basically, I'm just going to fill up this whole wreath form with all of my deco mesh. So pop a great show on or some fun music. You guys are going to see me doing some super awkward mom dancing here. Here it is. <laughs> I hope you guys get a good laugh out of it. But I was jamming out to some 90s tunes. So I'm a 90s girl. Um, and so if you guys feel me there, if you just love to jam out while you're crafting, drop a comment down below and let me know what your favorite genre is. Um, in fact, that can be the secret question for this video. I do, I am giving away a $100 Hobby Lobby gift card. So drop a comment down below and let me know what are your favorite tunes? Who is your favorite artist? Maybe I need to take some tips from you guys and get some new jamming out music. Um, so anyway, and also in total on this one, I ended up using six rolls of deco mesh so again they're just cut in 10 inch strips i'm bundling three pieces of deco mesh together you can curl them or they're going to kind of naturally curl and by curling i just mean you take and you roll them into like a little burrito or you can just kind of pinch them together and they're already kind of rolled up so i hope that makes sense also let me know if you guys have questions don't be afraid of the mesh it makes a fun little fabulous wreath the next thing i'm doing is i'm just going to take a zip tie and zip tie this super cute little happy pumpkin i feel like this pumpkin can be like fall or halloween and then I'm going to make a really pretty bow. I'm actually going to make a couple bows. So I'm just using my easy bow maker. You guys can grab them at the craft store or on Amazon or at Deco Exchange. And I'm going to make six inch loops and that'll be 12 inches for the entire length of the bow. Now I do love the easy bow maker when I cheat on my bows. It kind of holds it for me. So it can kind of allow me to be super lazy, which I kind of like to be when I've been doing a lot of deco mesh cutting and all of that stuff. And so I'm using some of this Dollar Tree ribbon. I use the witch hat ribbon and then I found one roll only of this harlequin ribbon which gosh I love this ribbon you guys I think it's so pretty and this is all Dollar Tree ribbon and then I'm using the candy corn ribbon I really wish I would have been patient and done this wreath when, when I had like a really pretty like candy corn ribbon but I think I'll probably have to go on Amazon and order that and maybe I can pop some of that in you know once the season gets a little bit closer and I'm decorating more for fall Halloween um, I don't usually decorate for Halloween until a little bit closer to the end of fall or sometimes actually I'll just mix it all in together. I don't think there's any wrong or right way. So I'm zip tying my little bow on. I just made several layers and again on the bow I pretty much kept all the loops um, six inches across or 12 inches wide. Um, 
and I did make another bow that's exactly like the first bow to put at the base of my wreath and then once I had that popped on and I'm just zip tying everything on I've gotten so addicted to zip ties I feel like they hold a lot better than the pipe cleaners I usually normally use but hey pipe cleaners are good too um, I just happen to have a lot of zip ties on hand so I'm trying to use what I have to be honest with you and now I'm just making like some little scrappy um, ribbon loops here so just cut your ribbons um, and they're about uh, 10 to 12 inches long and then I'm zip tying them into the side to kind of fill this wreath out just a little bit more so there's no real rhyme or reason just kind of add balance by using some of the leftover ribbon and again that's also going to use up the rest of those ribbon rolls and here I have my little happy happy joy joy <laughs> pumpkin wreath I feel like it's just so happy and almost kind of silly and whimsical but I'm using some Dollar Tree pumpkins they have orange pumpkins with the little black pokey dots and then also these little purple ornaments again these are all from Dollar Tree so this is totally a Dollar Tree wreath, and listen, I had so much fun making it. I hope you guys are inspired to try one. I was always so afraid of deco mesh, but I really have gotten so much less afraid, and I hope I'm sharing um, my instructions with you guys or helping you guys be less afraid, but it's honestly, it's super easy, and you can't go wrong. Um, it's so puffy, it almost covers up any mistakes. Oh, and Dollar Tree also has these cute little sparkly pre-made bows. I added a couple of those underneath my top bow to kind of fill it out, but it really wasn't necessary. It might've been a waste of that um, detail, but if you get really close up, you'll be <laughs> able to see it. So anyway, I just thought it was really fun. And now I have my Halloween fall wreath already made. I really love to get as many of my wreaths made um, as possible before the season hits. So that way I can decorate my studio, my front door. I like to put one on my dining room door and then also one in my kitchen. So I hope you guys are inspired and you're loving it. And if you guys look at it, it almost looks like my little wreath has on earrings. So I guess it must be a girl. <laughs> DIY. I'm going to take five rolls of Dollar Tree Deco mesh, some of this burlap fabric, and several rolls of a Dollar Tree ribbon, this little cute sign that I'm going to take apart, and then this tinsel Dollar Tree witch hat and some pipe cleaners. And I'm going to use my scissors to remove the tinsel from the hat. I want to make a scarecrow hat out of this little witch hat wreath. And once you have all of the tinsel removed, here is what it's going to look like. The next step is to tie a pipe cleaner to the top of your witch hat and just secure your piece of burlap fabric or whatever color you really want to make your little scarecrow hat. You could also use deco mesh if you wanted to, but I just took my fabric and wrapped it around and I did wrap it on top of each loop. So you just kind of wrap it and then wrap it and wrap it some more and that way it will cover up the little black part because you don't want that part to show through. So you could even double your ribbon and that would work as well. Now I'm just going to take a pipe cleaner and I pipe cleanered the bottom to hold that piece of fabric in place. No gluing required. And then I'm going to take several pipe cleaners. I probably used about 20 on this project or maybe have 30 on hand just to be safe. If you get a bag at Dollar Tree, they come 45 to a pack. And then I'm going to measure out eight inches for my deco mesh and what I do with my pipe cleaners is I just cut them in half super easy that's gonna help them go just a little bit further so I'm taking three rolls of my deco mesh and I'm laying them on top of each other and I'm measuring out to about eight inches and then I'm just gonna trim that off and what we're gonna do is make deco mesh bundles the next thing I want to share with you guys is I'm gonna make nine inch trims on my ribbon so I'm gonna take several different ribbons I think I ended up using two rolls of the larger ribbon and then two rolls of the smaller ribbon and then some of the little mesh tubing. Now I'm sharing with you guys some different ribbon ideas. The ones that I used for this wreath specifically were the chevron and the plaid ribbon. I thought that I was going to use different and more, but I ended up only using the chevron and the plaid. If you are trying to replicate this wreath exactly how I did it, otherwise just choose whatever ribbon you love and you do want to cut them a little bit longer than your deco mesh to help 
them kind of stick out and show off if that's how you want it to look. And then I'm just taking some of the smaller ribbon and I cut them in nine inch cuts as well. The next thing I wanna do is just roll my little deco mesh up into this cute little curly roll. So if you've ever rolled up a burrito or um, just, you know, kind of roll into a roll, I guess it's super easy, but it's not anything that's earth shattering. You just roll it into a cute little roll and there you have it and take whatever ribbon of choice that you want lay that on top of your little cute little bundle of rolls and there's going to be three um, of the deco mesh to each bundle and you're just going to put your ribbon on top of it and then take your pipe cleaner and pipe cleaner that together so easy you guys there's no way to mess this up don't fear if your mesh frays, just trim it off. Don't fear if your mesh is kind of wonky. It's gonna to be totally fine because once it's all kind of squished together, you're really not gonna notice. So the hardest thing for me really working with mesh is that it just has a tendency to do whatever it wants. So that's my own little personal probably control issue, honestly, um, but be patient with it and give it a little roll here. Now I did wanna let you guys know that I'm going every other color. So I did yellow and then brown and then yellow and you can do that when you alternate your colors so for this wreath I used three rolls of yellow and two rolls of brown Now I'm adding a little bundle of the smaller ribbons. And with the smaller ribbons, I just layer them on top of each other. I chose the sparkly orange and the cute little pumpkin ribbon that they put out at Dollar Tree. You can also find small ribbon like this, very similar at the craft stores, usually for about 99 cents or even less if you use a coupon. So again, I'm just making these cute little burrito, taquito, whatever kind of rolls that you wanna think about. Um, but just think about just rolling something together. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect. You can see mine are very imperfect. And you can also use a chip clip to hold your little rolls together. That can help save your fingers um, if you have problems with your hands. Now I'm adding the chevron ribbon on top and then again, just twist tie in the back. So the best thing to do is to get a bunch of these bundles all ready. And then the last one I wanted to show with you guys how to make was this one with the little mesh tubing. If you ever wonder what to do with that mesh tubing, it's super fun to use in a deco mesh wreath. So I rolled my little bundles together and then you're just gonna take the mesh tubing, lay it on top of the bundle and make a couple little loops, just two loops on either side and then tie that pipe cleaner on. Again, super easy and not hard at all. I just wanna encourage you guys to give it a try. So now I'm gonna start and I'm going to put um, one of the bundles, as you can see right here with my little um, pipe cleaner. You just take it and you pipe clean it on to the outward edge of the witch hat wreath. So I do two on the outer edge and then I alternate two on the inner um, edge and then you go two on the outer edge and two on the inner edge and I do that all the way down the entire wreath. And you'll see it's sectioned off into sections. Um, for the larger sections, you'll wanna put about four to five bundles. And then um, on the smaller sections, only about two bundles. But you can really kind of play with it and see what you have going on. Sometimes you'll find that you don't need quite as many. And sometimes you'll find you may need to go back in and touch it up with an extra little bundle of mesh. Um, but you'll also wanna kind of squish them together just a little Little bit so they look all nice and fluffy and full. So you're just going to continue to add your bundles um, and you want to make a pattern. So I started with the plaid ribbon and then with the chevron ribbon and then went with the smaller ribbon and then the little mesh tubing and then I just start that pattern over as I work my way down the witch hat wreath. Comment let me know if you guys have questions. This isn't hard, I promise. It's kind of hard to explain though, I guess. I'm sure you guys can tell what I'm doing with my fingers, but again, you just um, tie your little bundles of mesh on to the outward edge of your witch hat wreath, and then you tie the next two on to your inward edge, um, the little part that's kind of sticking out. So there you guys have it, and you continue to work your magic as you go. You can also fluff your larger ribbons and bundles as you see fit. It.
And then once you have all of your bundles attached and fluffied up, you continue to give it a good fluffing, which you guys know I love to do. And then next part, we're going to make a beautiful bow. So I'm gonna use my Easy Bow Maker and you can get it on Deco Exchange, on Amazon or any craft store. And you're just gonna take a pipe cleaner and pop it down into the center part. And then you're gonna start out with your ribbon. So I chose Chevron ribbon and I started out making an eight inch bow and then ended up having to re make it because it was actually too big believe it or not so it ended up needing to be about six to seven inches and when I say six to seven inches I mean on either side of the ribbon so on the easy bow maker it's super easy because it has it all measured out so I'm starting out with chevron ribbon and then I'm going in with this brown plaid ribbon and I'm just continuing to work my way back and forth and when they say it's an easy bow maker let me tell you it's super easy now I'm adding this cute little dollar tree um, a little red truck ribbon. I wanted to use this on a larger project bow because the little red truck seems to get lost when you're making a smaller project bow. It's the only thing about this ribbon I would say that I kind of struggled to use. I wanted to really give it um, a good show. And so now I'm using some of that Dollar Tree Pretty Fall Leaf Ribbon. And this is gonna make just a big, beautiful bow. Now, if you don't have an easy bow maker, don't fret. I have a really great bow video I'm gonna link in the description box of my YouTube video here and you guys can just click on that and you can make a really easy Olivia bow now I took a pipe cleaner and I just pipe cleanered that into the side of my little scarecrow hat wreath and then I'm giving it a nice good fluffing and I did end up having to trim my tails a little bit because it looked a little bit crazy with really long tails so the other thing I want to let you guys know is to make sure you guys um, cut that little cute dovetail triangle at the end of your um, bow tails the next thing I want to do is pop this little scarecrow into the top and then I'm also going to add some darling sunflowers I also added that cute little sign up there that was a little Dollar Tree sign I took apart and then some sparkling leaves and then of course I made a cute little bow for the top and then added a sunflower and here it is in all its glory oh my goodness how cute and adorable now let me tell you we're thankful in this home especially for our puppy bear we had a little bit of a scare with him he had an upset tummy and of course being a new puppy mommy I panicked anyway he got checked out by the vet and he's okay so I just had to give you guys an update on bear but check out this super adorable scarecrow wreath I mean this is gonna bring a smile to our face every for the next Dollar Tree DIY, I want to take one of these Boo Witch Hat wreaths and I want to share with you guys how to do a burlap scarecrow wreath. So I'm going to remove all of the tinsel off of this Boo Hat wreath and then I am going to take some of this burlap. Again, I get all of my burlap from burlapfabric.com. Use the $5 off coupon Olivia2020 if you guys want to. Otherwise, you can grab some at Walmart or any of your local craft stores. I'm going to use a pipe cleaner and pipe cleaner cleaner my burlap to the top and then just twist it around my little hat. I also um, cut off the little prongs that were on either side of my witch hat and that way they weren't troublesome on there or sticking out. It's really maybe not necessary, but I think it just gives a little bit of a cleaner look. So once I get to the bottom of my little scarecrow hat, I am going to take another pipe cleaner and just pipe cleaner that on to the edge of the scarecrow hat. This is super easy. And again, you guys can customize this to suit whatever decor you're working with. Now I'm going to take some of these pipe cleaners and just cut them in half. For this project, you don't really need full size pipe cleaners. So that's that will save you on some of your pipe cleaners. I'm also going to make eight inch cuts of my burlap. So I'm just taking my burlap and making eight inch cuts. And what I wanna do is I want to create just kind of a little burlap poof ruffle. I experimented with this. At first, I thought I was gonna do three pieces of burlap, but I ended up just doing two per bundle. So the other thing I wanna use is this beautiful fall. It's kind of like um, a tool 
and this is from Dollar Tree, but it has the most beautiful pattern on it. And I've been racking my brain on how I wanted to use this. So the first try on this bundle, I did just two pieces of burlap and then I did two of the beautiful lace tulle. Now make these however you want, but this seemed to be really nice. It gave me a really full wreath and um, I am going to use a pipe cleaner and I'm going to pinch my little center point together here and then I'm just going to pipe cleaner this together and that's going to give you your first bundle. Now I have shared with you guys how to do a deco mesh scarecrow wreath but I wanted to do something even just a little bit more different by using the burlap and I felt like the leaves were really elegant. It almost gave me the feel of being less of like a scarecrow wreath and more of a Thanksgiving hat wreath. I also had some of you all ask if you guys could um, make this into a cornucopia and by all means you definitely could. We may even do one of these. Um, so now I'm just going to take my pipe cleaner and twist it on the very end of the hat. So for the smaller prongs on the hat, you're going to do about two to three bundles and then you'll see there's some larger sections. You're going to want to do about four to five depending on how full you want it to look. The other thing I do is I alternate and I do two on the top and then I do two in the center length. So I hope that gives you guys an idea of how to do your ruffles and your prongs. And now you guys can just see me kind of working where I'm beginning to make up my bundles. So that's the other thing is I usually like to make up my bundles and try them out on my wreath. This might be something you guys want to do. And then once you see that it looks good and that bundle is going to work well, you can go ahead and pre-cut more bundles <laughs> and get started having fun. You might want to put a fun show on or even, you know, your favorite music because the cutting of the bundles is a little bit tedious, but once you get them all ready to roll, you, you can just go for it. So have fun with it. Take a deep breath and make something gorgeous. Now for the next part of this DIY, I'm going to take some really beautiful Dollar Tree ribbon and I want to make a really over the top bow. You guys know me, I love big bows and I cannot lie. So I have my scarecrow burlap kind of hat wreath all ready to roll over there on one side and then I'm just going to take a pipe cleaner and my easy bow maker. I got this off of Amazon but you can also find it at Michael's Craft Store. Use your 40% coupon and trust me, you're going to get a better deal than I did off Amazon but whatever floats your boat. Now you know, once you learn, learn more, you can do better. I didn't know that. And I bought this during the whole lockdown. And so I couldn't go anywhere anyway. And I wanted to try out this bow maker and I've been hooked ever since. Now I'm going to take, and I'm going to make about seven to eight inches on either side of my bow. And the bow maker has this little center thing that you just push your ribbon down into. It's so fabulous. And you don't even have to think about it. And it holds it right there together, which I love because I do have neuropathy in my fingers. So or in my hands and so it just helps me hold things better and it also I love that it has like the little measurements on either side that's another good thing because I have a tendency to kind of lose track on my bows but I do have a bow video for you guys um, that shows like how to make an easy bow without a bow maker so that's a really great one too whatever um, you guys are loving you guys know recently I've been crushing on this one so now I'm just going to add in some of this Dollar Tree orange ribbon this was so pretty and sparkling and I I started out with a Dollar Tree um, fall leaf ribbon. Again, I want this to be really classy and elegant. So I'm really working towards doing something kind of more that you could use towards, you know, fall and Thanksgiving if you really love that harvest look. A lot of people have asked for some traditional stuff. I, I feel like this is like very traditional fall. Once I have that done, I'm going to use this fall blessings and it says harvest on this ribbon. This is also Dollar Tree. And again, I just go back and forth with my ribbon. It's about seven inches on either side. And then you just pull the loop down. Um, so you start out, you pull the loop down and then you can cut upwards. Be careful of your little fingers and make that little triangle. And that's going to give you a really nice boutique finish on your bow. And just choose whatever ribbon makes you happy and whatever makes you smile. And that's going to go with your project. I wanted to add in some more of this orange because I felt like it would bring in those pretty leaves that are on the Dollar Tree tool. I just wanted it to really just be gorgeous. And so I'm using some of this really sparkling Dollar Tree ribbon. And I actually think this ribbon that's orange, I wonder, I'm wondering if it may have 
been supposed to be for Halloween because it almost looks like it has like a, a glittery sheen to it. The next ribbon I thought I was going to use was this Dollar Tree chevron ribbon, but I ended up just using some of the Dollar Tree polka dot ribbon. So this is just ribbon that they carry year round and I'm just popping this in and then I'm going to go back and forth um, making my loops, making it fabulous. And I think the polka dot was what I needed to bring in some whimsy because even if though I wanted to make it really elegant, I also wanted to make it pretty and whimsical. I attached the bow with a pipe cleaner on it to my cute little wreath and then I decided to take some of the extra ribbon and just make like kind of like a little scrunched up bow at the top. So I'm using some of the extra leftover ribbon. Keep that in mind. If you're doing one of these hats, you may want to save a little bit of extra ribbon just to make a doodly dad at the top or this kind of like little funky bow here. And then you can add more goodies. I believe I ended up adding like a little pumpkin and some other fun treasures to the top just to top it off. Off. And again, you guys can see the link down below to see more of these scarecrow hats and witches hats that I have done. Just different ideas. I just thought this would be so fun to share with you guys. Um, I did make this for my studio and the other one I made that had the little scarecrow on it, I made for my front door. And then I think I'll probably start making them for friends and family. A lot of you all ask what I do with my crafts. Um, I have an attic and just a regular craft closet that I store things in. I also give away things to my friends friends and family um, just to kind of treat them. And then also don't forget to give your bow a really good fluffing. Here is how it looks in the corner of my studio. And when I say studio, this is still in my home. It's just a little corner of my garage that I actually painted and set up to give me the feeling of like having a real craft room. Um, but really it's just a corner of my garage with some pretty curtains and a painted floor. So here's how it looks next to my darling little tree. Oh my goodness. Again, you guys, I'm just so crushing on this fall Christmas tree. Definitely going to be doing another one of these. I'm even strategizing now. How can I put this in my dining room and then do a big tree out in my studio? Oh my goodness. So fun and fabulous. And we did this all. I love to do is strip down all of my decor. I have a very neutral palette. And so that really helps me kind of change seasons fairly easily. So I use that green garland during kind of this summer transition. I'm going to remove everything from my mantle and just tidy it up. So I'm using the apple cider Mrs. Myers spray. I found it at Target. You can also get it off Grove Collaborative, but it is amazing. It smells delicious. I'm now going to take this Hobby Lobby garland. Now this is the neutral garland and I'm just adding one piece of garland to one end and the other piece of garland to the other end. And then my little secret trick to get these large garlands to stay on is to zip tie them together. The next thing I'm doing is taking some of these fall leaves. Now I found these fall leaves at the thrift store. I was so excited. My daughter and I went to a local Goodwill and I found quite a bit of fall goodies. I think it was maybe from a designer floral shop because they were really nice um, fall leaves as you can see. So I just separated kind of the leaves out and mixed it in with this garland. I wanted to give it some color. Now listen, if you like more of a subdued um, decor look, you definitely can just leave that garland as is. But if you like to go a little over the top, thinking about picking some leaves in to your greenery or your florals. And then I added a little bit of extra zhuzh with some of these fall kind of cream colored um, bundles. So I just want to share with you guys kind of an overview on how this looks. In case you kind of do like that more pared down look, I do love though mixing some of these kind of pretty, I'm guessing those might be maple leaves into this decor, but look at how beautiful this garland is on its own. Really, it's a stunner. So honestly, if you save a couple bucks up and grab some of these ones at Hobby Lobby, I believe they're 40% off now. Yes, they are. They're 40% off. And so here I'm also going to add the same strand of leaves to that next side. My next step is to grab some inexpensive pumpkins. These larger ones are from Walmart. They were five bucks. And then I'm using some of these little Dollar Tree velvet pumpkins. I really thought that was a nice touch. So Dollar Tree has multiple 
multiple colors of velvet pumpkins out right now. And then I wanted to go a little bit whimsical and add in some of the cute buffalo check pumpkins. So I thought that was just a fun way to really jazz this garland up. Now I'm taking this cute little thrift store thankful sign, again, something my daughter and I found on our little adventures, and I'm just popping it into the setting and I use just that little gold. Um, it's kind of like an artist easel or just picture frame holder. So I popped that in back behind it all. I don't usually add a sign to my garlands or my floral displays, but I just thought this thankful reminder is something I really need right now, just to remind myself to really, really stay thankful. Um, I feel like that's one thing about fall that I love is everything um, for fall is centered around gratitude and being thankful and counting our blessings and just giving joy and thanks for everything we have. So the next thing I want to do is share with you guys how to make a cute little fall Olivia bow. So you're just going to take your ribbon and loop it over on itself. And for this um, length of ribbon, I measured about 12 inches. And I will tell you guys that you asked me where the little um, lined kind of ruler thing is here that I use. And that is from Walmart. It's made by Fiskars. So I loop the ribbon over on itself about six times and now I'm finding the center. I'm gonna cut a tiny little notch on either side and when I tie it all together, that's gonna give um, my bow something to kind of grip onto. The next bit of ribbon I'm using is some really beautiful black and white check ribbon. This is actually Mackenzie Child's ribbon I purchased last year. I believe it was from the barn sale. I'm going to make this one a little bit smaller and this one's actually going to be 10 inches long and then again I'm just going to pinch it in the center and trim these little um, spots and just add tiny little notches. Now you don't even really have to do that but it does help your ribbon kind of grip together and it makes it um, a lot easier to make a really big bow. Okay, so I'm layering the checkered ribbon on top of the pumpkin ribbon, and then I'm gonna take a zip tie, and you guys, <laughs> I've been recently using zip ties on all my bows. I think I love the fact that you can get a really good hold on them, and they're super cheap, and they're pretty easy to use. Now you could use floral wire or pipe cleaners as well, really whatever suits your fancy. So once you have that done, trim off the end of that zip tie and you can tie a little ribbon around that. But once you fluffy up the, your bow, you're not going to see what was ever was holding it in the center. Now, this is my little trick. Take your bows and really fluffy them up really, really well. That's going to be the secret to a really amazing looking little bow. Don't forget to finish out your bow by dovetailing the ends of your ribbon. You want to give it a nice boutique finished look, especially if you're selling your goodies like in an Etsy shop, maybe you're making wreaths or whatnot, you want to make sure that the ends of your ribbon are all trimmed up nice and tidy. So you could just take and cut an upside down little triangle in your ribbon, or you can dovetail it or whatever floats your boat, but make it look really nice and nice and finished. So I'm just continuing again to fluffy out my ribbon. So when I create something, I like to do my bow, fluff my bow, and then once I attach it to my garland or my wreath, I will then re-fluff it again. So it's never, you're never done fluffing your bow to be totally honest with you. Once I had my cute little fluffy bow done, I went ahead and grabbed a zip tie and I'm just going to zip tie my bow into my arrangement and that will keep it on here really nice and well. And watch out right now <laughs> for some flying pumpkins. The other thing I want to tell you guys about is there's some really cool fall music on YouTube. If you put YouTube on your TV and then type in fall music, you guys can have a lot of different choices and they're so relaxing to listen to. Some of them are just rain sounds or piano music and rain sounds. You can see this one that I have on. I think it's the first one that pops up with the falling leaves and it is so nice. So here I am just kind of filling this out more is more in my displays. And so you guys know, I really love to go over the top and add tons of pumpkins and leaves and lots of fall goodies.
The next thing I decided to do was take some of these Dollar Tree velvet pumpkins and pop them into this large lantern. So I had this lantern that I grabbed from Hobby Lobby and I actually had them in my summer display. They were on either side of my mantle. And I decided to take the little DIY candles out that I did and just add loads of pumpkins. I don't know if you guys come up with, with every holiday where you have some things that you just have a lot of. And these velvet pumpkins, I had quite a bit of the orange velvet pumpkins from Dollar Tree from last season. And since I used them in my display last season, I thought it'd be pretty just to cluster them up in the lantern. And then I also added in some of the cute little mini pumpkins from Dollar Tree. They're so adorable. I'm not sure if they'll stay here, but it's really helpful, honestly, to get everything out into my living room. And then I'll probably end up moving stuff around and whatnot. Now, as I added in a little bit more orange into my fall decor, I realized that my garland needed a little bit of zhuzhin as well. So I'm actually gonna layer another garland on top of that. And this garland has just a little bit of, you know, some more fall kind of orange colors and some of those wine colors. So that's really, really, really going to mix things in. Now, if you guys are new to my channel, welcome. More is more in my world. I just love to go super over the top. And honestly, when I create my mantle displays, I always think about creating it like it was a fall wedding or a Christmas wedding. So I really love to do that with um, my florals and all of that. And then the next thing I wanted to do is just match this little lantern over here with the same bit of velvet pumpkins and mini pumpkins. And once I had those all layered in there, I just closed it up. And here is how that looks. There's how that looks. And then I had this little blanket ladder off to the side with um, just a cute little blankie on there. And then I had this galvanized bu bucket. I added some books and more, more pumpkins. I feel like this should be called the pumpkin palooza episode. <laughs> Count how many pumpkins are in my display. Actually, my little nephew was so funny. He um, likes to come over to my house and count all the pumpkins. I always say, how many pumpkins do you think this is? And it, he's so adorable. Okay, so here is how it turned out. I did add those cute little signs on either side of um, my mantle. One says welcome, and then the other one's like a little pumpkin one, and those came from Hobby Lobby as well. And then I decided to go with a black and white blanket. Um, if you guys would go back to my last video, I did share with you guys a Hobby Lobby haul. And then a couple videos back, I shared with you guys a Dollar Tree haul. So those are my two go-to places this season. Um, that, those two places and the thrift store. You guys, I love the thrift store. Recently, I've added into my decor as well this pretty little French chair. I got that off of Amazon and it was a little bit of a splurge, but it's so nice and cozy and it really rounded things out. Now, I'm almost feeling like this area over here might be a little bit cluttered, so I'll probably downsize some of that as I continue to decorate the rest of my home. And I'm going to take you guys along with me. There's Vinci Bear. He is going to town on his little bone. He is so funny with that bone. He's really been loving it lately. So I hope you guys are loving this fall decor. Now, I always love to drop a secret question into every video. So this video is no, um, we're not going to skip over that this time either. So it's no exception. That's what I was trying to say. <laughs> anyway, so the secret question for today is what is your favorite fall word? So I always think that thankful and blessed are probably my favorite fall words or grateful, grateful, thankful, blessed. So let's light up this comment section today. That'll give you guys an entry into my $100 Hobby Lobby gift card giveaway. But let's light up the comment section with amazing um, just gratitude or blessings or what's your favorite fall word. I would love to hear that. And you guys can add emojis to your comment and or maybe even a, a fall prayer or your favorite prayer. Um, so anyway, I love y'all and I thank you for being here. I hope you're so inspired to make an amazing display for your home or just fluff things up and start to look forward to this new season of fall decorating with so much joy. Thank you, thank you, thank you from the bottom of my heart. I truly love you all and appreciate you so much. I hope you're inspired. Oh, and I have to tell you about this pumpkin spice latte candle. It's from Bath and Body. Ooh, you guys, it smells so delicious. If you have a chance, grab some of those yummy pumpkin.
pumpkin candles as well. And here's some fun ideas too. So underneath this galvanized bucket, I put some holiday cookbooks. So it's just like a little splash of holiday. They're from the thrift store, but it's still giving me so much excitement to be looking forward to the holidays with joy. So I'm just taking a roll of Dollar Tree 21 inch mesh and I'm going to take a pipe cleaner and pipe cleaner it to the top of this witch hat wreath form. Again, one of my wonderful subscribers, April, sent this to me. Thank you. Thank you so much. I've never found one of these before. So it was such a delight to find one and use one. And this actually is really, really simple. You just take the mesh and you wrap it around the entire wreath form. Now you do want to pull it somewhat tight as you go and wrap it on top of itself. So you kind of wrap it and make sure that you're covering the entire wire part. You can also do these wreaths with the smaller little witch hat that they sell at Dollar Tree. You just remove the tinsel and you apply this same method. Now I'm going to wrap this entire thing all the way down to the base with the black mesh and it did take almost an entire roll of that large mesh. Once I have that finished, I I am going to take a pipe cleaner and just tie it off and then twist it on here really good and then I'm just going to cut that piece off. Now I'm going to take a fresh roll of the Dollar Tree deco mesh and again this is 21 inch mesh and you guys um, can also find this at the craft store. You can't find this at Dollar Tree. I'm also taking some pipe cleaners and I'm just going to pipe cleaner several pipe cleaners to the top part of the wreath form and also the bottom. And, bottom. and you can see I'm kind of staggering them um, so they're not directly on top of each other. The way that we're going to do this wreath is I believe it's called the poof method, which I've actually never tried the poof method before. At least I have it in a really long time. If I have, I do not remember. So I'm just going to take and I'm going to pull out about six inches on either side of a poof. So about 10 to 12 inches per poof. I hope that makes sense. Um, but you can see they're making these poofs. So you're going to pull out about 10 to 12 um, inches in length on the mesh and then push it together and poof it. And then you're going to take and pipe cleaner that on. And it's going to look like these aren't very poofy, but what you'll want to do once you're finished is pull those loops out and that's going to make it um, a lot poofier. <laughs> so I'm just going to continue to pull my mesh out, gather it, and then pipe cleaner it on. So I'm going to do that on the bottom and then I'm going to move to the top and then back to the bottom and back to the top. So you want to stagger it, uh, the poofs, you want one on the bottom, then you want the next one on the top, then you want the next one on the bottom, and then you want the next one on the top. So I hope that makes sense. And I did end up using just one roll of the 21 inch Dollar 
Tree Mesh. So I was super excited to find this mesh. But again, if you guys can't find it, no big deal. Walmart selling mesh, um, all the craft stores. You can even go on Hobby Lobby online. You could also order from Amazon online. So I, trust me, you can find mesh, I promise. Um, but go ahead and take the pipe cleaners and continue to add your poofs until you get all the way down to the other end of the wreath form. And again, it is gonna look kind of poofy and messy, but you can play with your poofs once you get done. You just do wanna try to make sure that they're about the same size. And I could have measured these, but I decided just to eyeball them. And I think it was working just fine. And then once I got to the very end, again, just pipe cleaner at the end and and trim that last piece off. Now for the next DIY, I'm gonna use my Easy Bow Maker and I'm going to pop a pipe cleaner down into the Easy Bow Maker and then I'm gonna start out with this pretty Harlequin ribbon. Now I did find this ribbon actually on Amazon and it came in a big roll, I believe it was 25 a foot. So that was quite a good deal. The ribbon was not the best of quality, but it works for this type of project. Now I, the rest of the ribbon I'm gonna use is Dollar Tree ribbon and I'm telling you guys, they come out with the cutest Halloween ribbon so definitely if you pop into your local Dollar Tree grab some or again you guys can find ribbon online fairly easily I am dovetailing my ends oh and the other part I'm so sorry I forgot to mention is you need to make this about seven inches on either side if you're e using your easy bow maker now if you don't have one of these no big deal I have a huge bow video I'll link down for you guys below you can use the Olivia bow method you do just want to make sure that you make super huge loops because this type of wreath will swallow a bow so because I made my poofs about six inches long um, I want to make my ribbons about seven inches on on either side of the bow. So I hope that makes a sense. Um, but it is a very, very large bow. I'm adding several different Dollar Tree ribbons and I just kept all of the ribbons the same size pretty much on this one. I used that cute little skull ribbon with the happy pumpkins and then some more Harlequin ribbon and um, just dovetailing my ends. And then I also used some of that orange and white Halloween ribbon. Now, once I have it all the way done, I'm just gonna pull it off and take a pipe cleaner and twist it together or you can just find a pipe cleaner that's down on your wreath and twist it on that way now I did do that but I felt like my bow was a little bit floppy so I suggest to pipe cleaner your bow together and then you can twist it into your wreath I'm going to make four of these bows and I know that seems obnoxious and very bowlicious but you guys know me I love to go super over the top so here is second bow and I'm pretty sure it's just as big um, as the first bow but you guys know me I love to do a super over the top um, wreath and this wreath because of all of the bows I feel like it came out re looking really high end like something you would buy in a specialty boutique or an Etsy shop for definitely you know quite a bit more than what you used um, to make it with so you just need several rows of ribbon I suggest two rolls of ribbon for all of the bows and then once I had all of my bows put on there I decided to use these cute little witch legs and then one of those little Dollar Tree witch hats and then some of those little Dollar Tree ornaments and I just hot glued those in and then I had the remnant of this sign this is a three-piece sign from Dollar Tree and I'm just hot gluing a pipe cleaner to the back and then I usually just take a piece of scrap ribbon and put that over it and then use the pipe cleaner to add that on to to my little witch hat wreath and oh my goodness you guys how stinking cute did this turn out the witch is in i think that's so adorable now of course it's a good witch you guys i promise i do cute and fun halloween decor but check this out with all these bows oh my goodness so make sure you fluff up your bows i also did add a cute little bow to the top and some more of those ornaments so comment and let me know what you guys think about this i went really crazy and it got bam for sure big you guys could always do this a little bit smaller or customize it and do a scarecrow wreath or whatever suits your fancy but i thought this would be so fun and fabulous
Neck DIY, I'm gonna share with you guys how I created this fall harvest Christmas tree. So I added a giant bow to the top and it's just a quick little Olivia bow. I'll leave my bow video in the description box of this video. But so I added the bow to the top and now I'm using this kind of mesh burlap. And I believe burlapfabric.com sent me this uh, burlap ribbon or maybe I grabbed it at Michael's, I can't remember. But you guys should be able to find some kind of burlap ribbon that you can cascade down your tree. Now I'm taking some Dollar Tree raffia and I'm just going to push the raffia into the tree. And it's gonna look a little messy when you first start doing this. And this is the first time Honestly, I have ever added raffia to a Christmas tree, and I don't know what I've been waiting for. This was so fun, and I just had so much fun creating this tree. You guys are probably gonna see me awkward mom dancing around, but listen, I had so much joy while doing this. Sometimes I wonder if I'm gonna be able to pull it off when I'm creating things, and then at the end, I'm just so pleased. So anyway, bear with me as we go. So I added the burlap ribbon, I added the raffia, and then my daughter helped me pop some of these batteries into the candles. She has been helping me out in the studio. Um, it's kind of like, I guess, her part-time summer job a little bit. But I also found this bag of ornaments and I'm just popping some of these ornaments onto my Christmas tree. I found the whole bag for $2 at our local thrift store. So I was pretty thrilled. I knew the harvest colors would be perfect. Now I'm adding those little DIY ornaments that we made. And these are just the stars and the hearts. And again, these neutral colors are really going to be able to pass for pretty much anything. And I kind of love the natural wood. Usually I would paint the wood on those hearts, but I felt like it just made them feel so natural and with the little crosses in the center. And here's another cross that I made in that Mackenzie Child's paper. Again, just a Dollar Tree cross, add some Mod Podge. <laughs> you guys... Here we go, some awkward mom dancing. I hope you guys get a good laugh. Then I decided to layer in some roses. Now stick with me. I know it's looking kind of crazy and I was thinking the exact same thing, but I was having so much fun. I literally could not stop. So I've also been sharing some praise and worship music with you guys um, with my good morning coffee. And um, there's a song called 100 Billion Times that I love. There's some Lauren Daigle that I love. And Anyway, so you guys type in Christian music and you guys can find some really great praise and worship music. And so that's what I was listening to. And I was honestly just filling my heart with joy as I was going about doing this little Christmas tree. I decided to add a big bow down kind of on the base of this tree. It's actually kind of how I create my wreaths. And I was like, I don't think I'm gonna like that. I ended up loving it. Now I'm popping in some of the Dollar Tree Velvet Pumpkins and these probably aren't gonna be out in your store yet, but they're leftovers from last year. And then I'm just adding in some Dollar Tree Fall Leaves and then some of those little Dollar Tree Feathers at the top. If you take your Velvet Pumpkins and put them on the end of a shish kebab, you can pop them directly into your tree and they will not fall out. That is my hack of the fall crafting for this year. My pumpkins fell out of my fall Christmas tree last year so many times. So here is how it turned out. Listen, I am over the moon ecstatic with this and it's really a blooming fall. It looks so pretty at night with the lights on, you guys. It's just so gorgeous and it's something so unexpected. Like I mixed the sunflowers so many different textures with the ribbons and the burlap and um, the raffia and the raw wood mixed with the velvet and the little cotton picks and all of these florals you guys are from Dollar Tree every single one of them so you can really do a lot except for the roses I will tell you that was a little bouquet that I bought at TJ Maxx it was kind of like a little bridal rose bouquet um, but I know if you guys are crafting it up, I bet you guys have a couple of roses laying around. Or maybe you can grab some on clearance. Michael's also has 70% off right now. We loaded up last weekend for my son's girlfriend's little place that she's been decorating and all of that fun stuff. So I hope you guys are loving this on a total budget and you're getting inspired to do a Christmas tree or a fall Christmas tree coming up.
for the next Dollar Tree DIY, I want to make a beautiful fall wreath using these fall mums and feathers and sunflowers and we from the Dollar Tree. So I'm using this 14 inch grapevine wreath base. Now this is from Walmart. They're $4 at Walmart or your local craft stores are very inexpensive. And I'm just going to hot glue these little wheat stems to the base of this. I'm also using some of these little picks that I found at the thrift store. Dollar Tree will also begin to put these out, just these little mini pumpkins. And I'm also going ahead and hot gluing my sunflower and my little mum. So I'm kind of alternating colors as I go along. And now I'm going to share with you guys how to make this really beautiful bow. Okay, so I'm using my Easy Bow Maker and this um, pipe cleaner. I pop the pipe cleaner down in there and then I'm using this McKenzie Child's Inspired Ribbon. I do get that off of Amazon, but please feel free to use whatever fall ribbons you might have on hand or that you love. Now I'm going to measure five inches across on either side of my Easy Bow Maker. And if you don't have an Easy Bow Maker, that's okay. I'm going to link a big bow video down for you guys below where I share with you guys how to make the fabulous Olivia bow. And that takes no tools at all. And it's so super easy. But I did want to share with you guys just a different take on a bow. This one's super easy as well. So now I'm adding in some striped ribbon for just a little bit of dimension. Again, use whatever ribbon you have in your stash. I really need to go out and shop for fall ribbon. Now I'm measuring this five inches across as well. So you just take your ribbon, crisscross it on either side, and then you can dovetail your ends by just cutting a little triangle upwards. And that's going to give you that really nice little boutique finish. So the Easy Bow Maker is also really nice if you will have arthritis or problems in your hands. I do have neuropathy in my hands. They sometimes give me trouble. So sometimes this is just a really nice little easy option. It's fun just to try something new. I believe they're about $14 on Deco Exchange. Um, if you guys want to look there, they also have them on Amazon. So I'm adding in a little bit of a burlap ribbon and then topping it off with a, just a little bit more of that check ribbon. Again, I'm going five inches across and then as I get towards my last ribbon I kind of make a little bit of a smaller loop there. Now, last but not least, I did top it off with a, just a little bit of burlap kind of mesh ribbon. I actually made this bow to go on another project from earlier this summer, but I love to repurpose and reuse my ribbon. So now I'm just attaching my big, beautiful bow to my wreath. Now I'm taking some of this Dollar Tree pumpkin ribbon that I had left over from last year. Hopefully they'll put some more pumpkin ribbon out in stores. And I pop that into the center because I wanted to pull in some of these fall colors and you guys can tell I'm just making the most beautiful blooming fall wreath. I love to go over the top with my designs with loads of florals and ribbons and bows but feel free to suit this to your fancy so you could stop at any point. I think right here is a really beautiful stopping point. I'm adding some feathers and some goodies and then you guys know me though I do have to go over the top and a little bit bow crazy because I love big bows and I cannot lie. I'm adding another bow to the top of my wreath that's identical to the one kind of over here on the bottom. So next a Dollar Tree DIY, I'm taking one of those Dollar Tree velvet pumpkins. They had these last year and oh my goodness, they're so gorgeous. Hopefully they'll have them this year. And I'm just using some of those Dollar Tree adhesive gems. They just stick directly onto your pumpkin and voila, you guys have an ultra fabulous pumpkin. The other thing I decided to do was cut some of my special ribbon into strips and really make this pumpkin pop. So the um, check ribbon was really pretty, but I felt like I needed to pull it in somehow with a pumpkin. So I'm just running it with some hot glue down this pumpkin. I've seen some very high-end designers creating pumpkins like this this year. So this is a trend um, and this is a thing right now. The black and white check is so trendy and I feel like that the Harlequin pattern and the McKenzie Child's checkerboard pattern is a little bit of a different take on the buff Buffalo check. Now, if you already have Buffalo check in your stash, I will be sharing with you guys some Buffalo check 
clad fall wreaths and floral designs because I do love buffalo check as well. So you guys could easily use this with buffalo check. And hey, think about this. If you love shabby chic or different kinds of decor, use those ribbons. Think outside the box and use what you have and what you guys love to your personal taste. This is what I am loving. Check this out. Oh my goodness. I am so, so, so crushing on this. I've seen some really high-end designers creating florals similar to this. And oh my goodness. I will tell you, somebody that is doing a lot of really, really beautiful wreaths. If you want to buy a wreath, they're very high end and beautiful is uh, my girl at the Bam Wreaths. Oh my goodness. She creates the most fantastic designs. I follow her over on Instagram, but anyway, that's for another story. She is a doll and a true treasure. Um, but here we go. Here is how this wreath turned out and I am in love with this. Now check out, we did this topiary that's in the center of my table um, the other day. So I do have a video on the topiary topiary and I have an upcoming video for you guys on how to create those candlesticks as well as some super amazing DIYs. Anyway, comment, let me know what you guys think about this wreath. I go over the top, but again, you guys do this design how you suit your style. A tree wreath, you'll need some scissors. You'll need some Dollar Tree Deco mesh. I used six rolls, four orange, one purple, and one black, and then about 20 pipe cleaners and a Dollar Tree wire wreath form. Then you're going to go ahead and cut your mesh. So I'm just using a can you can see here at the end to kind of hold the mesh down and my daughter was helping me with this. I was so excited because cutting the mesh can be a little tedious. We did double up our rolls and we're making 18 inch cuts on each row. So for this wreath, I want to do a ruffle method. So I'm cutting my mesh 18 inches. So you're just going to cut all six rolls about 18 inches. And you guys can choose whatever color you love. These were the only colors that my Dollar Tree had in. I would really love to snag some of the burlap colored mesh. But hey, sometimes you just have to work with what you have. Also, because I use so many decor pieces on my wreaths. You kind of can't see the mesh after I'm all done anyway. So once you get all your mesh cut, you're going to go ahead and make your ruffle poofs. I'm just taking the mesh and gathering it up and then pinching it between my fingers. And I want to add two poofs to each um, little bundle. So I'm going to make bundles and they're going to have two poofs in each bundle. So just ruffle it kind of up between your fingers. It's good to have a flat surface to ruffle on that helps. And then I'm going to take my pipe cleaner. I'm going to loop my pipe cleaner on the outer edge. I actually go one rung over from the outer edge and then I just kind of tie it on with the pipe cleaner. This is not fancy at all. You guys are going to see that I'm kind of a little bit of a messy mesh wreath maker. Um, but again, I do put a lot of decor on it. So I feel like that gives me some grace. Now here is my black and purple mesh. Again, I'm just cutting it 18 inches long and I want to cut all the entire rolls of all of it because I'm going to need all of it to really fill that wreath out. I really like my wreath to be nice and puffy. So I also did alternate too when I was making the little poof ruffles with the red, with the orange and the black. So I ruffled up an orange and then ruffled up a black and then took the pipe cleaner and just tied that together. And then I did the same thing with the orange and purple. So you guys can really get creative with this. Again, I wanted to alternate the color. So I spaced everything out because I only had one roll of the black and one roll of the purple. I hope that's making sense, but here's the down low on the deco mesh. It is so forgiving. Do not be afraid of this. For the longest time, I was always really afraid of deco mesh, but don't be afraid. So you can see here, I'm just ruffling my orange and my black together. I'm going to pipe cleaner those on, and then I'm going to alternate and do just a solid orange poof. So I'm just doing these little poofs, and I'm going to continue on this process, and I'm only going to make one roll of mesh. Because my poofs are 18 inches long, and they're 
they're pretty puffy because I'm doubling them up. I felt like that gave me enough coverage and also I'm going to be using a big sign in the center so I don't need a lot of coverage in the center. And I also had this burlap. I found this at the thrift store for 99 cents. It looked like it was from Hobby Lobby um, but I went ahead and also cut 18 inch cuts with the burlap and I'm just ruffling it and then adding it in. So I'm adding in some deco mesh poofs and then some burlap poofs. Comment and let me know if you guys have any questions and also I will put a supply list down below for anybody that needs a little bit more help picking up some of the supplies for this adorable fun deco mesh wreath. So once you have all of your little mesh poofs pipe cleanered on, you're going to go ahead and set that aside and prepare your sign. So I'm using the Dollar Tree Farm Fresh Pumpkin sign. I love this sign. And I'm just going to take two pipe cleaners and I want to attach the pipe cleaner to the back. I'm using a piece of Dollar Tree tag that I just cut apart and I'm going to hot glue onto the back of the sign and on top of that little pipe cleaner, the tag, I'm basically making like a little hanger to be able to wire this on to my little wreath. I like to do this because it makes your sign appear like it's floating. You could also staple this to the back, but I find that this works best for me personally. And so I'm just wiring the sign on now with the little pipe cleaners. I'm going into that inner loop of the wreath, as you guys can see up to the top left corner, and I'm just twist tying that on easy peasy. And if you wanted to cover up your work, you could add a placemat to the back and just wire a placemat onto the back of your wreath. So now I'm going to do my Olivia bow and I chose an assortment of ribbons from the Dollar Tree. All of these are from the Dollar Tree except for that buffalo check plaid. It's in the Christmas section Hobby Lobby. I'm going to make an Olivia bow so you just take your wired ribbon and you loop it over on itself. Now I'm starting with the chevron pattern and I'm making about a 14 inch long bow. So I used all of the ribbon that was on that roll and I'm just going to fold it in half to find my center. I'm going to take my scissors and notch the center of the bow on each side, but just make a tiny little bit bitty notch because if you cut too far, you'll cut your bow apart and you don't want to do that. So now I'm taking a piece of pipe cleaner and I'm just going to pipe cleaner this bow together and that's going to be the base of my bow. Now you guys know me, I love big bows and I cannot lie. So I've got to add tons more bows to this and go ahead and do just a bit of fluffing as you work in and around your bow. Now for my second bow, I'm going to use the Buffalo Check Plaid Ribbon. Again, I found this at Hobby Lobby in the Christmas section. It's not wired, but it works pretty good for my projects. And I'm going to make another Olivia bow, exact same format. You guys just loop the ribbon over on itself. You want to have three loops on each side. You can even kind of check it and see. And then you're going to take your scissors, you're going to notch in the center, and then you're going to go ahead and pipe cleaner that on. You'll use the same pipe cleaner that you you already used for the chevron bow because what you're doing is layering them. I love how this creates a really gorgeous boutique bow and to me it's super simple. Comment and let me know if you guys have any questions about this bow. I gave it a little bit of a fluffing and now I want to add another ribbon in and this is that Dollar Tree pumpkin ribbon. I love it. I think it looks really high end although the quality isn't very high end but it has a really gorgeous pattern on it with the little swirls and the pumpkins. Again I'm making a smaller Olivia a bow this time and I only did two loops on each side. So I'm going to notch it in the center and then just go ahead and add it in to this bow. You guys can get really creative with these bows. Use whatever colors you love and also use whatever ribbon you have on hand. Definitely scope out the Dollar Tree for some inexpensive ribbon. You can also find some fun ribbon on sale at your craft stores. So now for the final layer of this bow, I want to use that really pretty Dollar Tree polka dot ribbon. So it has a white background with the black and orange check polka dots. Again, I, these are very, it's a bit of a busy pattern with my bows, but I really wanted it to be very whimsical and fun for this beautiful fall decor wreath. I also want it to match in with the sign and the white pumpkins that I'm going to be adding to this wreath. So now 
now that I have my bow already, this is my favorite part. I like to go ahead and hang my wreath as I finish it off so I can see what I'm doing a little bit better. So I'm going to take my huge over the top bow and I'm just going to go ahead and attach it with a pipe cleaner to the wreath. Now you guys can see that the pipe cleaners are still kind of spiny and on there. I left those on there for a reason because I want to add some raffia into the wreath and then I'm going to cut all those pipe cleaner ends off. And so I'm just going to go ahead and give my bow a good fluffing and you guys know me I love to dance while I'm making my wreaths today's music selection was Madonna completely old school all of her old stuff you guys I was jamming out um, feeling pretty silly I never know if I'm gonna catch myself in these videos dancing but for some reason with wreaths I love to turn up the music and really go to town so now you guys can see I'm attaching another bow this is a very similar bow to the one I did up at the top. I'm attaching this bow down on the left hand side corner. This was actually the one I was going to use at the top but I ended up creating another one at the top. Make sure you guys make your bows big and full when you're attaching them to a deco mesh wreath because the deco mesh wreath really likes to kind of swallow your bow so make it really really large. Now my favorite part for these wreaths is to add in some raffia. This is so amazing for fall and it just is perfect. So I'm just adding in some raffia. I'm taking some of those pipe cleaners that are already on there and I'm just tying the raffia in with those pipe cleaners. That way we're not having to use any hot glue yet on this wreath. And I really like to add a lot of raffia into these fall wreaths. So I probably used three bundles. Now the Dollar Tree raffia comes two to a bundle. And so you guys can really get a lot of use out of this. It's also kind of covering some of that purple mesh up with that which I'm completely fine with. I wasn't really wanting to use purple in this wreath and it ends up you not you end up not being able to see the purple at all. But I did want to go ahead and give it a little bit of dimension and I'm also just using what I had on hand and what they had available in my store. So I'm also kind of starting to trim back some of those pipe cleaners now as you guys can see. I want to trim the ends off of those. We don't want to see those hanging off of our wreath. And the other thing you guys can do to make the ribbon tails really pretty is go ahead and cut a triangle upwards so dovetail those ends that's going to give you a beautiful boutique clean finish edge now the other thing I want to do is add more dimension at the top with some more raffia and now I want to go in with the fun detail parts and I'm telling you I love adding pumpkins you guys can just take one of your floral stems poke it up through those Dollar Tree foam pumpkins and that will give you a little pumpkin pick without having to pay for a pumpkin pick sometimes they can be a little pricey and now I'm using some of those Dollar Tree fall leaves that have some berries in them I just want to continue to layer and add dimension to this wreath so I ended up using some leaves and some pumpkins just a tiny bit of greenery because if you guys can see on that sign it did say farm fresh so I want this to really feel like we were out in the pumpkin patch and everything that was out in the pumpkin patch with the daisies and the pumpkins and the berries and that greenery like it was all ready and it was really an experience so I like to give my wreaths an experience call me crazy you guys but I just think it's such a fun thing to do to set the stage for your fall decor so here it is in all of its glory now you guys can see off to the left where I decorated that cute little shelf I shared a DIY with you guys on all of those floors. For this next DIY I want to share with you how to make a super easy adorable little mini sunflower wreath okay Okay, so I'm going to take this cute little sunflower ribbon. Again, I did get this from Hobby Lobby and I'm just going to make a quick little tuxedo bow. So to make the tuxedo bow, you just take the ribbon and you loop it over on itself and then pinch it in the center. And I just use a zip tie to tie it off. It made it a little chunky. I'd probably go back and use floral wire next time, but I've been crushing on zip ties recently. They just hold everything together so well. And so now I'm just going to zip tie my little tails on. So I cut some tails and it just make sure you dovetail those ends give them a nice little finish now I'm adding a cute little Dollar Tree sunflower to the center of it and then just some of these cute little Dollar Tree mini mums and that is going to be it now this is a super easy fun simple little wreath my idea for it is to pop it into one of my three-tiered trays I thought that would be a really cute or just any little space that needs some jazzing up and some happy 
fun vibes, you guys, because I'm really crushing on these bright, beautiful colors that just bring sunshine into my heart, and I hope it does yours as well. The Little Dollar Tree mini wreaths are for sale at Dollar Tree in their um, crafting section, and they come two for a dollar. So I just wrapped it in some of the little Dollar Tree burlap ribbon. Um, so anyway, I hope this inspires you guys to create something beautiful for your summer decor and it lifts your spirits. Now, as always, I ask that you guys um, comment down below the answer to my secret question. I am giving away a, a Hobby Lobby gift card, $100 for one of you guys. So I'll be announcing that soon. I'll leave the details down in the description box below. But the secret question for this video video is what is your favorite fall color I know I said it oh my goodness fall but I want to know if you guys are decorating with maroons yellows oranges comment down below let me know drop some emojis let's light up this comment section with all the happy vibes and love and just goodness and I love y'all and I thank you so much for being for the next Dollar Tree DIY, I want to show you all how to make a super adorable little scarecrow hat wreath. So grab one of those wreath hat witch forms from the Dollar Tree, and then you can take pretty much any ribbon of choice. I've also done these in burlap, but I'm going to use this orange ribbon from the Hobby Lobby, and I just added a dab of hot glue to the top, and then I'm winding the ribbon in and around um, the little hat witch form. So originally this did have tinsel on it, and actually this is leftover from last season, um, but you'll just remove the tinsel, and then I also removed those little prongs on the outside of it. And so just keep winding your little ribbon until you get full coverage on the hat part. Now for the next part of this DIY, grab some Dollar Tree Deco mesh. I ended up using three rolls and I'm cutting my mesh about 10 inches long. And then I'm going to take and just either burrito it, which you make like a little burrito roll, or you can also take and kind of scrunchy it. So this first one I actually scrunchy, but then I just kind of burritoed the rest of them. Um, mainly because the Dollar Tree mesh kind of rolls in on itself anyway. So I hope that makes sense, but make some bundles. So I also added in some of this Dollar Tree plaid ribbon and I just zip tied that to the end of my little um, wreath form here and I used about three bundles per section of the wreath form but usually I just kind of eyeball it a little bit and if it needs you know more or less uh, mesh and ribbon I'll just kind of add more or less. I also cut my um, pieces and strips of ribbon about 10 inches long as well. Now I'm not super precise you know on the I kind of just like to free flow with it and just have fun but I did go where I added in the plaid ribbon every other one so I did a bundle um, without the plaid ribbon and then one with it I hope that makes sense you guys just drop a comment down below and I'll try to answer um, some questions but it's super easy I always encourage you guys not to be afraid of deco mesh I'm definitely not a pro by any means I only work it with it a couple times this season but it seems like the more I play with it the easier it gets and you really can't mess it up and it really makes things look really cute and full listen I'm a 90s girl I love me some big bows so if you're on the big bow train and you love it jump on let's go for it and make a pretty little fall decor wreath because we're in this together now you and me together now what's the point of Another little tip I have for you when you're creating deco mesh, once you know the size of your um, deco mesh, I like to cut it and put it into a laundry basket because it just helps it not the mesh likes to grab a hold of everything on my crafting table and just make a huge disaster if you that's one little tip that i have that really helps me out it keeps it contained and just kind of easy to grab so you guys can pop on a show put this on your coffee table or kitchen table and just have fun with it it does take a little bit of time but i think the in, in process is really great and again i'm using about three to four, four bundles per prongs i ended up using three rolls of the dollar tree deco mesh and then one 
one roll of the Dollar Tree plaid ribbon. And then, you know, I just continue to fill it and I'm using zip ties to zip tie my on. Um, I also use pipe cleaners, either one works just fine. The next thing I'm gonna do is use my Easy Bow Maker and make a cute little bow. So for the bow on the Easy Bow Maker, you wanna do it six inches on either side or 12 inches wide. I hope that makes sense. And that way your bow can kind of pop out. And also don't forget to dovetail those ends. If you're making a really pretty nice bow, you don't wanna leave it hanging and just have junky ends. So that's a little tip there. And also I'm using this cute little ribbon from Amazon. Okay, this ribbon is so adorable. It came came in a four pack and it really wasn't too pricey, but it had all different kinds of varieties in it. So I got this little gnome buffalo check plaid ribbon and then the orange and black buffalo ribbon. And I did, oh, on the bow sizes, I did all of the loops about six inches across on either side or 12 inches total. Oh, and if you guys need a pretty good little bow video, I also do an Olivia bow and I'll link that down in the description box of my YouTube video. So once you pull your bow off, I zip tied it in the center, I fluffied it up, and now I'm zip tying it into my wreath. So I zip tied one of these sets of bows on one end, one in the center, and then one on the other end. And this is going to make a really nice, a little awesome, fluffy, amazing wreath. And then last but not least, I am adding just a couple little like scraps of ribbon to the top of it. And I just tied those on again with a zip tie. And then I'm using some of those little Dollar Tree mini pumpkins. They're so adorable. Listen, they come in a four pack, same as Hobby Lobby, but they're only a dollar. I really feel like Dollar Tree has totally killed it this year on their fall decor. And check out this super adorable little scarecrow wreath. So fun and fabulous, you guys. These are so easy to do. Throw that deck of mesh on there, make some big fluffy bows, and you guys have an amazing project. And hey, these wouldn't be too bad to put into a cute little Etsy shop as well. Just a little tip if you guys wanna make a little extra cash on the side. Make my bow actually first for this wreath. I'm taking my Easy Bow Maker, which again, I bought off Amazon, but you guys can get it much cheaper off Deco Exchange or the craft store. I bought this during the pandemic, and so I didn't have really any other choices. Okay, so I'm making a bow, and I'm gonna make it about seven inches across on either side. The Easy Bow Maker has this prong in the center that holds your bow, which I need. The neuropathy in my hands makes my hands hurt. <laughs> so this just makes it so much easier. Now I do have have a bow video for you linked down below in the description box that's no tools necessary. I'm going to take this Dollar Tree wired ribbon that has this pretty lace and I'm going to make my next loop. So you just take your um, ribbon, you go back and forth, you measure it because the Easy Bow Maker has the measurements right there for you. And I believe I measured this about six to seven inches on either side. And I usually measure a little bit tiny as I go down. So you wanna graduate maybe a half an inch to an inch as you go down, or sometimes I even just leave it the same size. I'm dovetailing my ends by um, cutting a little triangle upwards. That's gonna give your project just a little bit more of a finished look. So I'm going every other one with the cream ribbon and then the Dollar Tree burlap with lace ribbon just back and forth until I get the desired amount of bows. The tails are going to be here at the base but you can move them around and wiggle them around once you get them attached to whatever project you're doing. The next thing I want to do is remove my bow and I'm going to take some of this Dollar Tree floral wire and tie my bow together with the floral wire. I also love using a pipe cleaner. In fact I like using a pipe cleaner better a lot of times because I can get it a little bit tighter on there I feel like but please use whatever you guys have on hand and whatever suits your fancy. I'm now tying it on to my wreath willow base. They have these at Dollar Tree, but use whatever base you have. Maybe you have a wire base or a grapevine base, whatever suits your fancy. Now I'm gonna take this pipe cleaner. I felt like my bow was a little wiggly, so I'm gonna reinforce it with a pipe cleaner. Nobody is going to see this. This is going to hang on a door or a wall. And if anybody's looking behind your wreath, goodness gracious, um, Let's please don't do that. <laughs> no, seriously though, if you're selling this, you want to match your pipe cleaners, but if this is just for you, you're not gonna see this after you get all your flowers and your goodness on there. Now, biggest thing with bows, give them a good fluffing. They need love, they need lots of TLC. Don't neglect your bows, fluff out those loops. The next thing I wanna do is take some of my summer flowers. These were flowers I picked up at a garage sale. They're beautiful roses, some from Dollar Tree, some from, I believe probably from Hobby Lobby, and then some greenery, and I'm just 
just going to begin to add them onto the wreath. I'm using hot glue to attach these. You could also wire them on, but I'm impatient, and so I use hot glue. I'm pushing them into the little prongs on the willow base. It's going to help reinforce them. And now I'm going to add more and more flowers and roses. So I like to kind of go with a light pink rose and then a darker pink rose. I am using some of the Dollar Tree sunflowers and then these little mini pumpkins I spray painted with some baby pink spray paint and you get that at Walmart. I think it's ballet pink actually is what it is. And they're just Dollar Tree pumpkins. You add a, like a little floral stem to the bottom of them and pop them in with some hot glue and you are good to go with a fabulous little fall shabby chic harvest wreath. The next thing I want to do is take some of this beautiful lace. I believe I got this from burlapfabric.com. You use Olivia 2020 to get um, $5 off and then I'm just going to tie a shoelace bow and then use some hot glue and push it underneath some of my flowers. This lace is going to give your eye some interest. Now I'm going to use these beautiful glam jewels from totallydazzle.com. They come on a brooch so you can just um, take the little brooch thing and hook them in or you can also detach them from the brooch and just hot glue them on. Whatever suits your fancy. I'm going to add them and sprinkle them all throughout this beautiful fall shabby chic wreath. This is for my Aunt Janice and she is a princess and she has to have it be fabulous and perfect. Truly she is a doll and she has been there for me so many times. I just appreciate her and I want her to feel so loved through this creation. I'm continuing to add in some pretty flowers and bling and lace. And if you guys know me, you know I love to go totally over the top. So have fun with it. Use the colors that you love and that you have. You don't necessarily have to use the colors that you see that I'm using, but look at the palette that you're decorating with in your home and have fun with it and go for it. I did also add one of those little Dollar Tree mini signs in with the gather with a grateful heart. Um, that way she can hang it on her door at the Rose House and it will be beautiful and perfect and fabulous just like her. Oh, I forgot to tell you guys too, I added some of those little Dollar Tree white mini pumpkins. I thought they were just the perfect little touch and so fun and fabulous. And if you're doing a shabby chic wreath, think you may have some flowers already in your stash like I did that you were using for summer and spring. For this next Dollar Tree DIY, I'm going to use one of these mini wreath forms and just some hot glue and this Dollar Tree kind of burlap wired ribbon. And I am just going to use the burlap wired ribbon and wrap it around this tiny little mini wreath frame. Um, I've had these on hand and I actually want to save them once I get done using this craft because I think they would make a great little snowman craft. So if you guys see these in your Dollar Tree, grab a set of them, put them aside because we're probably going to make snowmen out of them once Christmas time comes. So I'm just wrapping this um, in my little uh, small wreath form here and then I'm going to just trim that off. And I found also these little cotton stem like pieces. So they're selling these in a two pack at Dollar Tree. And I thought those would be fun to add to a little mini wreath. I'm not sure what else really to do with them besides use them on a wreath. So you guys have to let me know. I'm kind of at a loss with these little guys, but I'm making a cute, easy a little bow here. And I'm just gonna tie it off at the center. So to make this bow, you just loop the ribbon over on itself and then tie it in the center. And so then I'm going to trim that off and then tie that on to the top of um, this little wreath form. And so then there you guys have that. And then now I'm just going to hot glue this over here like this. So these are those little cotton, they're called cotton pods, I guess. I just thought that would be fun for like a little easy farmhouse mini wreath. And this would be even something that you guys could do just so on a budget. And then um, I'm just going to add some greenery pieces to either side of the wreath. Um, and then you guys could get really creative with it. Add a little sign, a little mini sign. I didn't do that. I couldn't find a great little mini sign that I wanted to use. So I just thought that this as a decor piece was a fun idea. And so here's how that looks there. And the other thing I want to let you guys know is I am going to be announcing my Cricut Joy giveaway on my socials today. So you guys check my socials, my stories. I'll have that giveaway winner announced. I always love to spoil you guys and I always love to ask you guys um, 
in this video or in any video, what was your favorite craft that I've created and um, which one will you be recreating? And also I love to ask you guys kind of an inspirational question. And so for this one, I want to ask you what has been your biggest blessing this year, 2021, drop a comment down below. What's been your biggest blessing? Um, so I think we could just light up this comment section with loads of fun and then um, all of that kind of fun stuff. And I love you guys. And I'm gonna pop in a clip of Benji Bear here real quick to share with you guys, my little puppy dog. those flimsy Dollar Tree garlands and some Dollar Tree Deco mesh and I'm gonna really jazz up this garland so you're just gonna take a Dollar Tree pipe cleaner and you're gonna wrap it around the end of your garland and your Deco mesh and then you're gonna pull about six to eight inches of the Deco mesh and just kind of make little poofs and tie your pipe cleaner on now you're gonna twist your pipe cleaner about twice and leave it on there don't cut it off because you're gonna add multiple layers to really get this baby nice and full. So you're going to continue to tie on your deco mesh until you get to the end of your garland and I believe it was about eight poofs give or take again this doesn't need to be perfect at all because you're going to have so many layers on top of it you're not even going to see what's going on very much underneath so once you get to the end of your garland you're just going to trim off that deco mesh and then you're going to take the deco mesh and begin to run it back down the other end you're going to get about halfway through and realize you've run out of that roll and start with another roll so each dollar tree fall garland is going to use about one and a half um, rolls of this deco mesh and you guys choose whatever color you love I happen to come across a lot of orange deco mesh at Dollar Tree so I went ahead and used that but it would also be beautiful with the green the yellows they do some really beautiful browns as well so just continue to make your poofs and tie them on with that pipe cleaner I like to twist my pipe cleaner about twice now once you get to the end of your garland you can go ahead and trim that off now I'm just using some burlap ribbon now burlapfabric.com sent me this ribbon what a blessing because I love to craft they're also offering you guys a five dollar off coupon if you want to take advantage of that they have huge rolls of burlap which makes it really great if you're doing huge garlands so I'm just taking the garland and I'm adding it again over the mesh and I'm just kind of creating little poofs again this doesn't have to be perfect you guys um, and even kind of a little bit messy is fun so I ran the burlap down one end and then down the other now I created three garlands like this to make it big enough to fit my front door but use whatever you have and however many you need will work perfectly for whatever size door you have or whatever means you have and so I'm also taking one Roll of the green deco mesh now it didn't go the whole length of this garland so I added in some yellow on the other side again once you guys see the final product you'll understand that it really doesn't matter so much because you're going to be adding ribbons on top now burlap fabric also carries these beautiful large rolls of orange ribbon and the pretty leaf ribbon and also some chevron ribbon now if you're going to be doing a super huge garland like this and you want to add lots of bows like I did you may want to look around online and just see I'll leave their coupon code down below it's five dollars off um, your purchase now I did use my pro bow the hand bow maker to make these kind of big fluffy bows and I'm adding it on to the garland with a pipe cleaner so I made four huge bows I added them two to each side and then one at the top so five total I added these big giant bows and then 
also these beautiful Dollar Tree pumpkins. I used some of the Dollar Tree burlap pumpkins and also some of the white pumpkins. And then I just added in some more pretty ribbons along the way. I kind of just dug into my stash and got really creative and just went for it. I also added in a little bit more of a leaf garland. I believe I picked this one up at Walmart. Again, I had it in my stash, so I flopped it. We are going to start with this large, it almost looks like an elongated toolbox. I found it at the thrift store for $3. It was a total score. And then I'm going to take these flowers that I bought on clearance. They are at Michael's. They were 70% off. And I do have some foam dropped down into my little base here. I'm starting with these taller orange sunflowers. Now you guys can really find sunflowers pretty much anywhere right now. I always start with my taller pieces and then I want to mix in greenery. Greenery is a great place to start when you're doing any kind of floral arrangement and we are going to get really big with this one and go over the top now these are some really pretty smaller orange florals i'm going to pop them in a little bit further down below kind of as more of an accent piece and i want to kind of make them look like they're blooming out so you can see i kind of have them tilted now these sunflowers again these are in a bundle you can buy them at dollar tree i found these i believe at michael's and they were actually in the summer section so just a quick little tip when you look for florals for super cheap look at their tag see if they're at the end of the season which a lot of their summer flowers will work for fall um, because they do have sunflowers everywhere showing for fall so just I went ahead and put sunflowers on either end and then I'm continuing to build my flower arrangement now I'm gonna go really over the top really big I almost want to feel like this is going to be a fall wedding display I did not have plan on this, but you guys, I just went crazy with the flowers. So I popped three sunflower bundles in. I sprinkled one on each end and then one in the center. And then I'm picking them in with these smaller little orange flowers. The other little tip I have for you guys is to cut your stems at varying heights. So you don't want them all the same. Now here I'm picking in some more grass. And this grass again was a summer grass. So so look for your summer colors right now that will work for fall that are on clearance. Now, once the end of summer is over and I transition more into fall, I may pull out a little bit of the yellow sunflowers and just put in more leaves. We'll have to see because this arrangement I'm pretty pleased with at the end. So also don't forget to pick in your greenery in the center and go for some height. That is going to give it some drama. Again, these are more summer flowers. These are just some pretty little kind of trailing flowers. I love to add another dimension. So you guys want to look for more dimension. Now here's some Dollar Tree wheat grass. This is in kind of that burnt yellow color. I wanted to again to add more dimension. So just have fun with your flower arrangements. Pick out about five to six different picks and then all kind of go with the same hue. So these are also Dollar Tree. They're little tiny cream colored flowers. And I'm just popping them in because I do have a lot of a white backdrop. So I didn't want it to be completely stark without any accent pieces. So go dark, light, dark, light, and then look at the decor around you and try and pull in some of that as well. Now you can see I'm also putting some greenery kind of to the back so you can see it springing out and to the side, but have fun with it, you guys. Go for it. Add a ton of flowers. Listen, I wanted this floral arrangement to burst, to just scream happy. I haven't done a really over-the-top floral arrangement in a while, and you guys can tell I've been missing it. I love to share with you guys how you can have a boutique gorgeous home on a budget. These flowers cost me $40 total because they were 70% off at Michael's. So you guys can also look at Dollar Tree. You can look at Hobby Lobby, use those coupons, shop those sales and have a fun and go for it. Now, the other thing I'm popping in is some more kind of wispy, smaller sunflowers. So a good thing to do too is to look for larger and then smaller and then larger and smaller. And that will help you give your arrangement some dimension. And then the next thing I wanted to add was just one more little bundle of some smaller little orangish flowers. These are just so great to pick in. And that way, again, you're giving dimension and you're giving some different size difference. I'm trimming this off because I want it to be a little bit shorter. 
So I just put my shorter flowers in front of my arrangement and then leave your stems taller and longer towards the back and the center. If you're going to go for this look, now again, this is totally over the top and really I just wanted it to scream happiness and joy and just have fun with it. Now here are some of those Dollar Tree feathers. You guys know I'm totally in love with these. I'm going to put them in the front of the arrangement because it's so tall. I didn't want them to get lost. So I want them to kind of cascade out. They also have that kind of bit of raffia or wheat kind of hanging off of them. So again, it's giving more transition and more dimension for the eye to look at. Here's another fun little tip for you all is to take some of your floral stems and pop your little styrofoam pumpkins onto them. So these are those Dollar Tree velvet pumpkins. I popped several different colors into here. The other thing I went ahead and did is I used a greenery um, garland and I mixed that in with a fall garland and the brown fall garland came from Michael's as well. So I noticed that a lot of like really beautiful fall arrangements have of greenery mixed in which I really never thought about doing but I thought it was a great idea and so here is how it looks after I added all of my flowers and I just wanted to give you guys some confidence to do a really pretty arrangement now you don't have to go this big if you don't have a mantle that's okay you could do this on an entryway table you could do something smaller on a dining room table or a little cabinet just use whatever you all have this really isn't even a mantle it's actually actually just a shelf that Mr. Romantic built for me to kind of make it look like a mantle. Now the other thing I'm going to do is share with you guys how I created this beautiful bow. So I'm going to take my easy bow maker and this is just some buffalo check plaid ribbon that I ordered online. You can also find it at Hobby Lobby in their Christmas section. It's a better deal to get it at Hobby Lobby and Ho Hobby Lobby is also shipping just a little FYI. So I'm starting out with my easy bow maker and I added the little pipe cleaner at the bottom and then I'm doing a seven inch bow. So it's gonna be seven inches on either side. This is a really large bow. And I'll tell you the reason because I have a really large floral. Now I'm going in with some of that beautiful Dollar Tree fall leaf ribbon. And I also want to tell you guys that you're going to twist it as you work with a ribbon that has a pattern on the side. So you can see I'm going back and forth and twisting it. And also I'm just making the second loop about six inches in length. You can make it the same. But the seven inch seemed a little bit long even for me. And so now I'm going to go ahead and just trim this ribbon off. Always cut a triangle upwards and that will give you that pretty boutique finish. Now I'm going to go in with this beautiful, if this is an orange check ribbon and this is actually from Michaels. I'm mixing like craft store ribbon and Dollar Tree ribbon, which is another little kind of secret tip that I have. Now Dollar Tree is actually putting out a lot of really great fall ribbon. So don't be worried if you can't spend the extra on the craft store ribbon or you only can get out and go to Dollar Tree. Um, that's okay too, but it's fun to mix a little bit more of a high-end ribbon, especially if you can use your cute on and get a great deal on it and mix that in with some of the Dollar Tree ribbon because the Dollar Tree ribbon can be a little bit flimsy at sometimes. Now I'm taking this, it's kind of like a Mackenzie Child inspired ribbon. Again, this is from Amazon. It's not their actual brand, but I'm mixing that in as well. So for the Easy Bow Maker, it's super easy. You just go back and forth with your ribbon and I also will leave a bow video down below for you guys. Don't worry if you don't have an easy bow maker. I still have a really fabulous video for you guys on how to make an Olivia bow, which I love. I've been cheating though and using my easy bow maker. It just goes so fast and it gives me a little bit of a different bow. So again, I'm dovetailing my ends and I really just pretty much kept all those other loops about six inches long on either side. Now I did splurge and I get this pretty pumpkin ribbon. Again, this is from Michaels, but I did use my coupon, so that helped a lot. And I'm just gonna go ahead and add that in. Now I'm gonna make this just a little bit smaller because I don't want it to get swallowed up in this last loop. And it is my show off ribbon. So I like to leave my prettiest ribbon that I want to show off with the most pattern 
for the last um, bow. And it saves ribbon a little bit because you're gonna always make that last bow just a little bit smaller, at least I did. And then you're just gonna pull it off the Easy Bow Maker and you're gonna kind of cinch it in with your pipe cleaner. And then I wanted to attach it to my arrangement. And my idea was to do cascading um, bows that matched. I'm gonna twin my bows on either side of my arrangement. And I just honestly used a push pin to attach it. So hopefully it doesn't get yanked on. I don't have small children, so it'll be fine. But here is how that arrangement looks. Oh my goodness, you guys can totally do this. The bows, I did a lot of fluffing and I'll be honest with you all, I will probably do more fluffing. The other thing, I actually ran out of one of the Mackenzie Child inspired ribbons on one side. So I just kind of had to make do with the Buffalo check. If you guys can see on that right hand side that it did come out just a tiny bit different, but that's okay. Now for some of my fall decorating, I found these really cute little pillows on Amazon. And then I'm just using my little Dollar Tree pumpkins right here. And some other pumpkins that I had DIY'd. Dollar Tree has some super adorable pumpkins. You guys, you know that I am a pumpkin obsessed. So I just used the cute little pillows I ordered off Amazon. And these are actually pillow covers which are really great and then these little cute thrift store uh, pumpkins on either side I have this cute little um rug from Dollar General that I put in front of it. I actually need to redo my floors so don't look too closely. And then there's that little blanket ladder I shared with you guys a DIY on. It's actually paint sticks. So you can make a blanket ladder out of paint sticks and just make it super adorable. And then there's that DIY Dollar Tree plunger tree that I shared with you guys on. So as always, comment and let me know what do you all think about this arrangement. Now you all know that I go totally over the top crazy with my floral arrangement for the next DIY I'm going to share with you guys how I put together a Halloween fall Christmas tree and there he is the star of the show my little Benji bear my assistant I did hold him the entire time and then put him back up I didn't want him you know getting any of the flocking in his mouth um, but this is the t38 Walmart flocked Christmas tree it's pre-lit and it's six and a half foot I do have a lot of people ask me where I got this Christmas tree. So there's the information for you guys on that. I do try to touch every branch and I also have that amazing little Dyson vacuum. Again, that was on um, the Black Friday special. So I'm taking this Dollar Tree Deco Mesh and this is the 21 inch wide Deco Mesh. Lo and behold, I was shocked that I found it. I'm not using anything to attach the Deco Mesh except for the branches. And here's the demonstration here. You take the evergreen branch branches and you just twist them together. So you just cross the branches over on themselves and the deco mesh, you just kind of push it in and then twist it over on itself. I hope that makes sense. If you're nervous about it staying, you can always use some pipe cleaner or a wire, but the deco mesh has a tendency to kind of stick in there. It's totally up to you what you're comfortable with. So I kind of wound it around the tree and kind of created like little poofs and then I'm winding it back around the tree. So I only used one roll of that giant 21 inch deco mesh. Now I'm only kind of showing it from this side. I'm not going to decorate the back end of the tree that much. It's really more for show in my studio, but if I were to do a full tree like in my home, I would probably end up using two rolls. So just a little side note there for you guys on that. I do end up using a little bit in the back, but again, it probably, I would want to fill, fill it out a little bit more and just use two rolls. But there's a little side note on that. Now I did use black and then I'm going to go in with some white. Again, this is the Dollar Tree Deco Mesh, the 21 inch, and I'm starting at the top and then just kind of bubble winding my way around. So and I mean bubble by pulling that mesh out and crisscrossing the evergreen branches around and then kind of winding it down. There's really not a whole rhyme or reason except for kind of this crisscrossing pattern that I'm using. So you can see I'm starting at the top and then I'm just kind of winding it down and around. And I love using deco mesh. I'm kind of old fashioned 80s, 90s girl. I love the big kind of fluffy poo 
poofy bows. That's my style, you guys. If you like something different, go for it, but you're here. So this is how I love to decorate and how I love to go totally over the top. That's just me. And again, I use all of this one full roll. So for the entire tree, I used two rolls. Now I'm taking that Dollar Tree Buffalo Check Plaid Ribbon and I used one full roll of the buff Buffalo Check Plaid Ribbon and then a little bit of another roll that I had. I'm also using this burlap. It's from burlapfabric.com. I'll leave the link down below. I do have a $5 off coupon with Olivia 2020. I'm layering it together and again, I'm just using the branches and twist tying them on top of each other. Here's the demonstration for you on that. I'm pulling them out in about 12 inch poofs and then just kind of winding them down the tree. Again, kind of using that crisscross method. I like to find where the mesh spots are and find that spot. I hope that makes sense. Comment down below if you have questions. I'll do my best to kind of answer. Um, but again, I just kind of find a little pattern and go for it. Now I'm taking this beautiful ribbon that I found at Michael's. I used one roll and it had, I believe, um, 25 foot on the roll. And the same thing, I'm just attaching it with the evergreen branches and I'm layering it on top of that burlap ribbon and just kind of pulling the poofs out. And it kind of looks a little bit of a hot mess, but it's gonna all come together in the end as I add the ornaments and the bows as I go along. So just take a deep breath and have fun with it and I do kind of do a bit of a crisscross pattern as I go. Now I'm finishing up the crisscross ribbon pattern and I'm doing my little happy dance jig because it's kind of coming all together a little bit better than expected and it's super fun and happy. I've never combined the buffalo check plaid with the polka dots. You guys can go back on some of my videos from last year and see how I did my Christmas tree. I used a lot of buffalo check plaid. So you guys totally laugh at my um, happy, crazy, funny mom dancing. I'm actually completely laughing at it too, but I thought I'd leave it in just to give you guys the laugh of the day. Um, but super fun and fabulous. And then for the next DIY, I'm going to share with you guys how to do my Olivia bow. This is no tools required. You're just going to take your ribbon and loop it over on itself. And I'm using a 14 inch um, long ribbon here. So just loop it over on itself. And I like to loop it over on itself three times. So continue to take this ribbon and loop it over on itself. I know I'm probably repeating myself on on that but that's what you do this is such an easy bow you can totally do this you're then going to cut that off and then you're going to find the center of your bow find your center right here now the next step is you're going to cut little bitty tiny notches in the center of your bow itty bitty tiny notches and do not cut very big notches because if you cut through you're going to ruin your ribbon and you don't want to do that now you're going to take a pipe cleaner and the pipe cleaner is going to secure your ribbon right here because you don't want your bow to fall apart while you're making the next part of your ribbon 
and I like to go about two inches smaller on the next part of my ribbon. Now I'm still doing the happy dance because I guess I just love making bows and ribbons. And I am going to do a little bit smaller on this next bit of looping. I did share with you guys that it was about 14 inches, but it really needs to be a little bit smaller. So I guess I was getting a little bit carried away with my measurements there, but it needs to be more about 12 inches. This candy corn ribbon and this stripe ribbon is from Michaels. Just a little side note there. Continue to loop that ribbon over on itself until you get about three loops on each side. Find your center and then notch the center. Now the reason you do the notches is because you need your pipe cleaner to have something to hold on to. When the pipe cleaner grips the ribbon in the center, you can pull your ribbon loops out without them pulling out. So you don't want them to pull the loops out to where the ribbon falls apart. Hope that makes sense. Okay, now for the next one, you're gonna go about two inches shorter on the very last loop. Okay, sad thing here, I used a little bit too much of my ribbon, so I'm gonna have to go really small here. And I only have one loop. It happens, you guys. Long story short, I needed to have picked up a lot more ribbon on the polka dot ribbon but hey i had fun i made a fabulous tree and so i'm just going to make one little loop here and then add that to this last part but you know what we're going to work with what we have which is what i am known for it's what i encourage you guys to do and it's okay it's going to be okay it's just a bow now the next thing you want to do is fluffy up that bow take a deep breath have fun with it begin to pull your loops out that's where the secret to your bows are going to be Pull and fluff, pull and fluff. Make sure it's nice and fluffy. You guys can do this, I know you can. Now that you have your bow all fluffed and attached, you are ready to add some goodies to the top of your tree. I found these beautiful faux kind of peacock feathers and I'm gonna add them to the top of my tree. And just add some sparkling goodies because you wanna give your tree height. And that's what gives you a designer look on a budget. These were only $2 for this entire bundle, which I was shocked to find. Oh my goodness, how fun and fabulous. And then I also found these cool little witch legs. These were all at the Goodwill. So definitely pop into your thrift store, especially for a holiday like Halloween. I don't really decorate for Halloween that much, but it is fun to be a little bit festive and to share with you guys some DIY ideas. And I also am gonna use the Scarecrow. You're gonna be surprised how I'm gonna use this. I'm actually gonna use this to hold my little witch hat on. I saw this polka dot witch hat and I just knew it'd be perfect to do this fun little festive tree and it's actually fun because it sings and I just thought the puppy would think that was so cute and I really think the puppy is like my new baby since my son just went off to college. I do did have to do a little bit of arranging but once I finally got it on there it finally fit right. So again I had to do some more fluffing and arranging and you guys know how it goes when you're doing a Christmas tree. This was absolutely my very first fall um, Halloween Christmas tree and I really had way too much fun with it. So get out your Christmas tree, take a deep breath, make a pumpkin spice latte, have a fun with it you guys. I feel like this is the year to get super creative and do what's in your heart. Spread some joy throughout your home. We need that right now. We just need to have fun. We need to have some joy because life is so short and golly goodness this has been the year. I mean, I'm telling you guys, so I'm gonna spread joy here. I want you guys to spread some joy out in your homes. And if that means popping up a Christmas tree early, even if it's a little bitty tiny tree, you guys don't have to do this, trust me. But if you want to do this, go for it. The sky is the limit. So here is how it came out. So fun and fabulous. And as always, I ask that you guys comment and let me know what was your favorite DIY in this video and which one will you be creating? recreating? I love to hear what you guys are up to.
next Dollar Tree DIY, I want to take this puppy training pad box from my new puppy. Um, and also I'm going to take this pumpkin patch sign from the Dollar Tree Farmer's Market calendar. I'm also going to take some white spray paint and just go ahead and spray paint the entire box white. And once that is done and it's all dry, I'm going to take some Mod Podge and apply a really generous layer of Mod Podge over the entire box. I get so sloppy with my Mod Podge, you guys. I have no idea why. Now I have to give credit to Barb from the Shabby Tree. I saw her do this on her page and it was so cool. I have been wanting to do um, a fall Christmas tree. This is actually the first fall Christmas tree I'll ever do. So what we're going to create here with this box is a Christmas tree base. And you can use the pumpkin patch sign on one side and then she suggested to flip it around and use the um, little Christmas tree calendar sign on the other side. So you're going to put a generous layer of Mod Podge down and then lay your little sign down and then put another layer down. Now I will tell you that there are going to be some wrinkles in this project. So take a deep breath. It's not the end of the world. It's still going to look super cute, even if it does have a little bit of imperfections. The other thing you guys can think about, if you cannot find the Market Fresh calendar, you could just use some pretty paper from your hobby lobby or maybe another calendar. I actually had some striped um, paper laying around and I didn't have the exact same one to match this side. So I ended up using a different pattern for the other side. So just have fun with this, you guys. It doesn't have to be perfect. We're basically just recovering a cardboard box. I love to find ways to repurpose and reuse and how fabulous is this? And thank you, Barb from the Shabby Tree for giving me this amazing idea. Now I'm going to take this curtain Christmas tree that I got at the thrift store for $5 last year and it hadn't been pulled out of its box so it did need a bit of fluffing and I was really disappointed because the lights did not work but I persevered. <laughs> Comment and let me know if you guys ever get a little frustrated when you're doing crafts. So I ended up popping that in to the little box here and I'm going to share with you guys how we're going to decorate this fall Christmas tree. Again this is my first fall Christmas tree and I did have to retrain my thinking a little bit to decorate a fall tree. It would seem easy, but it actually wasn't as easy as I thought it was going to be. So I'm starting out with some Dollar Tree Deco Mesh and I'm using this kind of brown color and I'm going to end up using, I believe, two rolls of Deco Mesh on the tree. And what I'm doing is I'm just cascading the mesh down the tree and then pulling it out in kind of eight to 10 inch kind of like little bubbly loops. Now my tree was wobbly because if you use a 12 by 12 box, you should be able to stand your tree stand down inside of it, but mine did not. So I just added some fabric around the base of it and I carried on. Um, also, I wanted to let you guys know that when you're doing this mesh, it doesn't have to be perfect. So you just want to kind of loop it in and it's going to give your tree some fullness. So give yourself some grace, have a fun with this, and really you can revamp any little thrift store tree. And as you guys can see by the end, once you see the end, of this, we are going to cover the entire tree anyway. So I'm going to add lights later once I fill my little um, Dollar Tree lights with some batteries. And see, you guys can see here's the other side with little Farm Fresh Christmas tree sign is. How adorable is that going to be for Christmas? Now I'm taking some of this burlap fabric and I get all of my burlap from burlapfabric.com. I love these big rolls. I'm going to leave a $5 off coupon down below. It's Olivia2020 for burlapfabric.com. If you guys want to use burlap from them. Otherwise, you can find burlap at Walmart or even order some online at Hobby Lobby. So check the description box below of this video and then I'm just going to trim it off. So what I'm doing here is I'm just cascading these giant pieces of burlap down the tree. So wherever I kind of didn't have the deco mesh, I'm just kind of weaving that in and around. And I'm not tying this on. I'm just using the Christmas tree branches and crossing them over on themselves to kind of hold this in. So that's just a little tip. If you guys feel like you need to use a floral wire or a pipe cleaner, by all means, secure it in there really well. It is going to stay up 
probably in my studio on this little stand, although it came out so super adorable, I'm thinking about moving it into my house. So anyway, you guys, I have just been had, having so much fun decorating with you guys and crafting with you guys. And I did end up adding burlap all around the entire tree. And then I did just do one little small loop here at the base just to kind of fill it out. I also like to dovetail my ends by cutting a triangle in an upwards direction. For the next Dollar Tree DIY, we're going to make a super adorable fall Christmas tree tree topper. So I'm taking my easy bow maker and I'm just going to add a pipe cleaner at the very base. And I got my easy bow maker off of Amazon, but you guys can find them at the craft store and use your coupon. So now I'm just going to take my ribbon and I love the easy bow maker because it measures directly across. So it helps me have more, um, you know, symmetrical bows, I guess, but I have a great bow video that I'll link in my description box for you guys. If you don't have one of these, never fear. I have a super amazing easy one that I shared with you guys today on my Facebook, and I'll also link in the description box below of this video. So I just went about seven to eight inches across on my ribbon loops. Now this ribbon from Dollar Tree with the little red trucks is so adorable, and I thought it would be perfect mixed in with the buffalo check for a really fun and fabulous fall tree. Now this orange plaid ribbon, or buffalo check ribbon I actually found at Michael's but Dollar Tree has been putting out the cutest ribbon this season oh my goodness and again I'm just measuring it about seven inches across and then you shove it down into your little easy bow maker these these are two little prongs and it just holds the bow which I love I have neuropathy in my hands so it's such a great big helper for me this ribbon is super adorable I found it on Amazon and this was the last one I decided to use now hindsight 2020 with this bow I went a little crazy with patterns and colors, but I was able to make it all work with all of the different colors that I used in my Christmas tree. And you guys will see how that all comes together at the end. So bear with me if you think this bow is a little wild. Now I'm taking my pipe cleaner and I'm just going to pipe cleaner my bow all together, twist it around, and then leave the pipe cleaners at the back of it because we are going to tie this on to the top of our Christmas tree. Now, don't forget to give your bow a good old fashioned fluffing. That is the secret to all my bows is I really fluff them and pull the loops out quite a bit. Now I'm just tying this on to the top, very top of my Christmas tree. And then as you can see, I'm really pulling these loops out and fluffing them. I don't want any of the pretty ribbon to get lost. And I also want to make sure that it's nice and full and fluffy. And that's when it, what's going to give your bow a boutique finish. The next thing I wanna do is take this string of Dollar Tree leaf garland and I'm just going to loop it in to some of the areas where there's no deco mesh and I'm going to do about three to four of the Dollar Tree garlands um, just kind of cascade them down your tree you could also just use some fall leaf picks that would work as well um, again I do love to go really over the top with my decor but if any point you guys feel like it's too much you can always stop and um, just be pleased with your work there but I do love that really full boutique look um, I also am pushing myself to use what I have this week in my crafting stash I have a lot of fall stuff and so I want to pull everything out and put as much on this tree because my idea actually is is if I'm crafting and I need something off the fall tree I'm just gonna pull that off now I'm picking in some of those little Dollar Tree burlap leaves and then the next thing I wanted to do was put this cute little um, harvest Dollar Tree wooden plaque sign on here and I did play play around with a lot of the decor I put this white sign on here initially I eventually took it off I also tried out these smaller Dollar Tree pre-made bows and again I did end up taking those off something about them I just didn't care for them but they probably would be cute once I was editing this video I thought oh those actually looked pretty cute but I'm kind of a crazy person <laughs> when I'm decorating a Christmas tree and I dance around and I really like to go back and forth just to see what I absolutely love. So I wanted to make this a little bit more bold with oranges and I believe that's why I took those off. So now I'm just taking some Dollar Tree picks and I'm 
adding them to the top of the tree. I'm basically just shoving them into the top. Um, normally when I do a really big tree, this tree was actually only like a four foot tree, I believe. Um, but normally when I do a really big tree, I will take wire and I will wire around the top of that, but they seem to stay really well. The next thing I wanted to do was just add in some little pumpkin picks and some additional ribbon with um, the little pumpkins on it to pull that into the bow tree topper. And here is the finished project, the finished fall Christmas tree, my first time ever taking the plunge. I added in some more little fun like Dollar Tree sunflowers and some of these little Dollar Tree um, wooden cutouts that I had decoupaged some Mackenzie Childs inspired um, paper onto. We did that in another DIY. You guys go check out my huge I Love Fall playlist. I'm going to link it for you in the description box below because we have done so many fun and fabulous DIYs. Here is like a cascading version down and I am going to share with you guys how to do these little decoupage Mackenzie Childs inspired napkin pumpkins. Oh my goodness. I think I will do a fall tree from here on out. This was so fun. The only drawback of course is that it doesn't light up but again I am going to add some pretty lights into it. Maybe even I'll splurge and order some of those fairy lights that are really pretty and twinkling off of Amazon. Thank you Barb for encouraging me to put up a tree. Okay I have to know if you guys are going to put up a tree. So comment down below if you're going to go crazy, pull out a little mini tree and just have fun with it. If you guys have been crafting along with me, you may have a little bit of stuff in your craft stash. Another thing that I think is going to be fun is I think I'm going to do like a Halloween tree. A not so spooky Halloween tree. You guys know I love to do like little happy things for Halloween, just little funsy things. So, but I am crushing on this Harvest Beautiful Bounty Tree. I think that's a great name for it. What do you guys think about that? Comment and let me know what you think and if you'll be doing one of these. So thank you all so much for joining me on another fun and fabulous crafty decor adventure. It is a true blessing and honor to have you all here. If you all are new, welcome. I am Elizabeth Olivia's Romantic Home and I love to share with you guys how you can make your homes boutique gorgeous on a teeny tiny budget. I share a ton of DIY Dollar Tree and budget friendly crafts on my YouTube channel as well as a little bit of baking, tidying, and decorating along the way. So thank you guys for get, again for being here. Don't forget also to listen for those secret questions in my videos. I love to share with you guys some fun giveaways and also pop over to my Libby's Romantic Home Facebook page. I do several DIY videos a day over there to keep you guys totally inspired and I even have a fun little free group page so when you guys are making some of the crafts that I've inspired you to make, I love to see pictures um, of what you guys are up to with your DIY crafts and your home decor. So feel free to post over there. Join me over there. And it's a positive community. So it's just a place where we can and relax and unwind and just, just share each other's crafting um, fun goodness. <laughs> so thank you guys again. I love y'all to the minute and back. I'm hugging all of your hearts so tight. I can't wait for our next video. Wish me luck on being an amazing bridesmaid for my wonderful sister. So I love y'all. Thank you guys again. And until our next video, be kind to yourselves and be kind to one another. And I'll talk to you guys very soon. Bye-bye.